City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 10th of December 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present please stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of our country, at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Please be seated. <laughs> members. Um, I just want to do one other memorial before we start the meeting. Yesterday afternoon, a volcano erupted on White Island off the eastern coast of New Zealand while a tourist group was visiting. It's been reported that at least five people have died. News reports have stated that 24 Australians were on the island at the time, 13 have been hospitalised and the remaining 11 are unaccounted for. Still unaccounted for include three South Australians, Zoe Hocking, a year nine student who attends St Aloysius College and her parents, Gavin Dallow, a prominent Adelaide Rotarian who operates the prospect based Dallow Legal and has previously worked for the Legal uh, Services Commission, and his wife Lisa Dallow, an engineer who's worked for Santos since 1998. It's been reported that a family member is flying to Auckland to search hospitals for the trio. The rescue operation was initially hampered by smoke from the eruption and is now considered by the New Zealand government to be a recovery mission. New Zealand police say there is no further signs of life on the island. There is a strong probability that casual numbers will rise. Following a request from the Prime Minister's office, the City of Adelaide has today lowered its flag to half-mast to honour the victims of this tragedy. Tonight, many people within our city are rallying to support each other as they anxiously await news about the Dallow family. Our thoughts are with those who were caught in the eruption, as well as their families and friends, those who witnessed this tragedy, and the first responders and rescue teams. Thank you, members. There are no apologies or leaves of absence tonight. So I'll look to item six, which is the confirmation of the minutes from the 19th of November and the 28th of November. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a seconder, thank you, Councillor Kerra. Members, any comments, changes? If not, to the mover, someone? Thank you to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, I have several deputations tonight. Um, I have uh, Dr. Lucien Chafee, 
um, talking about the parklands in light of climate catastrophe. Sorry, yes. Before we proceed, um, it's been raised with me that there was a request for a late deputation from uh, Nijol Kajokas. Apologies for the pronunciation. I understand they were keen to speak on the dry zone. Could that be considered as well? Um, members, that application came in at uh, 4.26, so in accordance with our governance uh, regulations, we didn't accept it, though it is up to the floor. If you'd like to allow the additional deputation, I'll look to the floor. I move that it be accepted. It um, doesn't need to be moved. I just need a show of hands to accept the additional de deputation. Uh, that will be five deputations tonight. So a general show of hands, members. So that will be allowed. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, in order, I will ask uh, Dr. Lucien Chafee to please come forward. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Thank you for the chance to speak today. Just a quick reminder that as a research academic, I deal in facts and I'll happily supply you with the sources um, after I've spoken. On 20th of August this year, Council undertook a workshop and received a 47-page report which identified that climate change is a global megatrend for sovereign risk and that deferral of action is nonsensical in a policy sense as well as unlawful. Council declared climate emergency a week later. In recent months, we've heard from assorted voices about our parklands and their future. Notably, those that oppose what they see as unscrupulous commercial development of the parklands seem outraged. It's almost as though the space that they belong to and for which they have a duty of care has been invaded, colonised by commercial enterprise. And that may be so. Memory is short. I remind all that sovereignty was never ceded by the original inhabitants of this land. At the last meeting of council, Councillor Abiyad spoke about the law of the land. What is the law of the land? Neither system of law that is in place here, Aboriginal or Australian, entitle council to rush toward irreversible decisions and take liberties with public assets or indeed adjacent private land. Section six of the Local Government Act states that the principal role of a council is a to act as a representative, informed and responsible decision maker in the interests of community and b to provide and coordinate various public services and facilities to develop its community and resources in a socially just and ecologically sustainable manner. Is council informed? You've been briefed on the economic and legal risks of climate change. Will Council consider seeking further factual information, this time about what agendas and worldviews have produced the ecological disaster that we now face? And what local management of public green space means in that context? Is it ecologically sustainable to continue alienating portions of our parklands? Can Council accurately say that to treat our parklands with anything less than structural and rhetorical reverence is responsible action? Not only are our parklands a buffer against heat, noise and dust, they are also the last vestiges of the natural landscape upon which settler colonial state and enterprise have built their foundations. And as such, they represent the site on which we must now demonstrate our willingness to work together to develop, to develop a healthy understanding of what is required in order for us all to survive. I urge anyone interested to take a look at the sacred trees in Parapadinula, I apologise for the pronunciation, from which shields were likely cut pre-settlement and to think about where we are at now. 
A report from Flinders University states that recognition of and investment in Indigenous knowledge and environmental management practices is driving innovative solutions to pressing environmental issues. For example, in the partnership between state government and the Nurundjeri Nation at the mouth of the Murray, the report further states that incorporating more of the spirit and principles of our Aboriginal people's appreciation and deep understanding of the landscape and its features has been overlooked or sidelined in the past to the detriment of the environment. This includes traditional bushfire management, which is known to be part of the solution to our current national crisis. I'm not sure what you're looking at, Kara. I haven't passed anything around. I do not purport to speak for an Aboriginal people, but like all of us here, I'm a major beneficiary of settler colonialism. If you know your history, you'll be aware of the enormous entrepreneurial contribution made by the Chafee family, which was pivotal in the birth of the Riverland growing industry. But we have failed to take proper care of our resources. To claim that proactive protection of our parklands is backward and obstructive would appear to reflect a muddle-headed and misguided worldview. Economic growth as a dominant priority is short-sighted and misinformed. Local strategies that connect the wider population as well as visitors with Indigenous owners regarding the best ways to preserve and work in harmony with nature are forward-looking, are progressive. The public would surely be receptive to this. A change in attitude is needed. Thank you. to talk to us about the Adelaide Football Club and the Aquatic Centre. Mr Sodi, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor and councillors. I have been an Adelaide Crow supporter for 29 years, since before they ever played a game, in fact. I attended all their matches in their inaugural season, 1991, and I've been cheering for them ever since. But I am not barracking tonight for the Adelaide Football Corporation. Yes, I use the word corporation because they're not a club in the way that word is usually used in the English language. Unlike a two-hour game of footy, the Crows have been playing a long game with the City Council. From 2014 to 2018, the Football Corporation and their sponsors provided semi-regular free entertainment and hospitality to City Council executives, totaling many thousands of dollars. A mere pittance for corporate sponsorship, but it's about to pay off big time for the AFC tonight. After years of schmoozing, they this year finally managed to persuade a majority of city councillors that what is good for the football corporation should be good for the council's community. The agenda this evening has a lot of detail, but skims over or omits such a lot. First, we have a document titled Needs Analysis. It's full of lots of interesting information and might have formed the basis for some decision-making if it had come 12 months ago. In short, the so-called needs analysis identifies problems with the aquatic centre, but offers no recommendations about which way to go. It says nothing relevant about the rest of Denise Norton Park. Then the next thing on the agenda is a very kind offer from a generous corporation to fix all those aquatic problems. Pretty pictures have finally been offered. Except, of course, it's not generous. It's a proposed commercial takeover on terms attractive to the bidder. And it's not just about an aquatic centre. The Adelaide Football Corporation is quite explicit about wanting a lot more than that. They want their administration and private training facilities on public parklands, and they want much more, or they would over time, if the council opened the door to them. Any assurances given tonight by the Adelaide CEO, Adelaide Football Corporation CEO, will be meaningless in five years. Mr. Fagan will move on. His promises would not be, uh, could not possibly be enforceable, and the AFC will no doubt find that a lack of liquor is damaging its business model, and can we please change what we said back in 2019? 
The council normally does a great job of consulting with its residents and ratepayers. It's doing that at, right, at the moment in regard to playground at Rymel Park. But for reasons that escape me, the council has twice this year rejected motions to consult with ratepayers about whether or not they should be inviting a commercial giant to take over part of the world unique national heritage listed Adelaide Parklands. Tonight, that prohibition is being lifted perhaps and we'll finally get over Christmas the kind of engagement that the council is prepared to tolerate. The agenda proposes a curated set of three leading questions offering no alternative options and obviously designed to elicit a positive response to the only option that the council is prepared to put forward. APA predicted that this was coming, so we decided to do consultation for you. We asked a random sample of your residents, your ratepayers, your voters, whether they supported the council's current course of action. The answer is in. The results of the independent reach tell poll reveal that your residents and ratepayers don't support what you are doing. Opposition to what you're doing is highest in postcode 5000. APRA is not the only group that's been campaigning on this. Among the thousands of Parkland supporters are many very prominent South Australians, including a former Premier, a former Lord Mayor, a former Crows coach, and of course, Denise Norton, who is with us tonight. You are at a crossroads. You can go down in history as the council that opened, part two for coming decades of commercial exploitation, or you can stand with Denise. You know whose side your voters are on, and so do we. Now we all are aware that there is a large majority for keeping new commercial developments out of parklands. The council in this year's budget allocated $100,000 to investigate UNESCO World Heritage Listing for the Adelaide Parklands. This was very welcome, and it's not a pipe dream. The city's got the first ever public park in the world, and we are, of course, the world's only city in a park. Those two facts combine in Adelaide's favour to give us an asset that no other city in the world can match. The prospects of world heritage listing will not be... Does this mean I have to finish now? Or have I got 30 I'm seconds? I'm sorry, that is uh, five minutes. So if you just wind up... Then wind up? Right. Thank you. OK. Please don't conflate community interest with naked commercial interest. Tonight is the time to respect the community's views, withdraw from the unsolicited proposals process with the AFC and conduct a real engagement process, talking to neighbouring councils, all without having it tainted by the commercial goals of one corporation. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you. you. well acquainted with the rules of being in the chamber and we will be starting the uh, business of council shortly at which point I will ask you to refrain from cheering, clapping, cajoling, whatever you like to do. Um, if you insist on doing that I will actually pause the meeting and uh, we will continue from there. I would like to welcome uh, Ms Norton. It's lovely to see you. Um, let us go now to Mr David Andrewatha, who is speaking on the alcohol ban for Veal Gardens. Mr Andrewatha. Thank you for the chance of uh, speaking to the council. I've been a resident of the City Terrace Apartments for the last two and a half years, and I'm the secretary of the Strata Group. As a committee, we're concerned about the increase in the antisocial behaviour in the Ville Gardens this year. There's a regular group that drink all day in the park as they have easy access to alcohol and they suffer the effect of alcohol abuse. So there's arguments, uh, physical fighting, exam examples of domestic violence, often in the presence of children. They don't use the public toilets, leaving urine and faeces in the garden and the lawns. When they leave the gardens, there are many signs of litter, including wine bladders, boxes, used toilet paper, 
empty tins of food, bottles and cigarettes. And often glass bottles are deliberately broken on the pavement, which stay there, which is at the risk of anyone else. There was a recent uh, report on Channel 7 News that showed footage of this behaviour. The council gardeners then have to waste at least their first hour of time cleaning up any rubbish and replanting any damaged plants. And this is a waste of the council um, resources. And on weekends, we have to do that job. And I refuse to pick up feces. Um, my wife and other residents are also sick of the loud, penetrating, argumentative voices which go throughout the apartment and uh, you can easily tell when people are there and seeing people go to the toilet in the gardens. Our only uh, res resort is to call SAPOR and then everything quietens down for about 10 minutes and they dis when the police go, they come back. So ambulances and SAPO are regularly called to treat the group, which can vary in size from 10 to 50 people. Several of the residents have felt intimidated either walking in the gardens or driving into the apartments. I've seen a family that were having a picnic being chased back to their car and being verbally abused. Last night, a girl, after sleeping on the lawn for two hours, staggered onto the road and was hit by a car. Uh, an ambulance took her away. I don't know the result. And previously, a girl nearly drowned in the creek, but she was uh, saved by a police officer. I also feel that the council is meant to be supporting small business, but this antisocial behaviour is also affecting the local cafe, which was voted the best cafe in the uh, southwest corner. The continual fighting and arguments place stress on the workers to have recently left, and it hampers the development of the cafe. Now there is a list here, but Kate is going to talk after me and show that. But I've witnessed the stress on the owners, and sometimes I've been called to um, help the owners get to their cars because they're feeling unsure. So there's been damage to tables, um, the front door's been spat on, staff have been threatened, um, customers sitting outside have people demanding money and not leaving um, unless the owner called the police. All this ruins a very great um, public space for everyone to enjoy. As a residence, we have held a public meeting. We've tabled a count, uh, petition to this council with 37 out of the 51 apartments supporting it. We've completed a survey for the local member of parliament with the large majority favouring an alcohol ban. I'm aware that Little Athletics in Park 20 and the EFN gym are requesting some action. We've been promised action before this summer uh, to happen in summer, but it's now the second week of December. The situation can't continue and it needs a circuit breaker of a 24-hour alcohol ban, not a referral to another committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr Andrew Arthur. Um, our fourth speaker tonight is Mrs Kate Allen, um, again in support of a 24-hour dry zone. Ms Allen, if you could come forward. Thank you. You have five minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, it's ironic, tomorrow's the first birthday of my son's cafe, which was opened opposite Ville Gardens. Um, when we started, our hope was to create a sanctuary, create a community, create a space for people to enjoy amazing coffee, food, but most of all be nurtured and nourished on every level. It started off that way, with sporadic issues, with drunken behaviour across the road. And the more weeks and months that have gone on, the worse it's become. Excuse me if I'm a bit shaky, this has had huge emotional impact on my son and myself and the staff, as well as the local residents. Each week the violence has increased. We've approached council, we've worked with SAPOL, who have been amazing, and I'd like that put on the record. 
but I see the frustration in them when they can do little when they're called. We're subjected on a daily basis to abuse, threats, racial abuse, because we won't offer free food and drinks, cups for their alcohol, and a myriad of other things. We're not giving them away. You know, the heart of us would love to support them. You see these people in the state they're living in, or we've been advised by police not to do that, or we'll become inundated. I love my job. I'm the chef there. But as the months have gone on, I consider myself a strong person, but I get in the car and have an anxiety attack as I approach the cafe. Our lives have been threatened on more than one occasion. People have come into the cafe and urinated. They've broken furniture. They've threatened our staff. They've threatened customers. They beg. We have floor to ceiling windows, if any of you have actually been to Ville Gardens. And our daily vision is of men beating women, women beating women, women beating men. The most horrendous violence, something I've never witnessed before. And in amongst this, the children and toddlers and babies who are being indoctrinated into a lifestyle of this being normalised behaviour. We have on many occasions been told this is a complex and difficult issue. In my opinion, it's not. This is not a racial issue. This is a negative social behaviour. There are white people, there are Africans, there are Indigenous. This is not an issue that we can tolerate anymore. The screaming, the yelling is unbearable. David mentioned sometimes up to 50 group, 50 people. On times there's been more than that. And now there are different groups claiming different spaces and fighting each other. They defecate, they urinate, they deliberately smash glass and leave it all over the park. I, similarly to David, watch your beautiful gardeners come and spend hours planting and when they leave, I watch the plants be ripped out. I watch giant sticks beat the roses off the bushes and worse than that, I'm bloody terrified. I walked to my car the other day and was approached by eight people. I'm not gonna use the language because that's not me, but I was, just use your imagination, called a white racist and told that they were gonna kill me. This is Adelaide. This is what I thought was a mature, civilized city. Time and time again, I hear all the reasons for not doing this, but as your community, as a local business, as residents, I think it's time that we were supported. Just doing it for from 8 p.m. to 11 a.m. is simply not working. It needs to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I watch families come and then I watch these groups arrive and I watch them leave. I watched a Muslim woman who ended up in our cafe the other day, terrified and in tears because she had been racially abused and harassed over in the park. I consoled a customer the other day who's recovering from cancer and it's his place to go. And I didn't get there in time. He was approached by several people who were in a highly intoxicated state, wanting money and threatening him. He was in tears. And I went back inside and I turned my back and I just sobbed. Crying is something that's an everyday thing for me these days. It's not okay. I'm asking you all to not water this down it needs to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are businesses who keep their front doors locked because they can't walk out the back in case people move in, come in and threaten them. My son bought produce from the farmer's market last Sunday and forgot to lock the door and turned around and there were several people there. I challenge any of you to want to work in these, this environment and I really ask you from my heart to not block this. Your community needs it, and so do the people over in that park, so they can get the help they need to break this horrendous cycle. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we have uh, the late admission, which is uh, Nikolai uh, Nel Hokas, I'm, and I apologise, oh, Nicole, sorry, uh, speaking to us on the proposed dry zone. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'd like to um, extend my appreciation to the council, to the Lord Mayor for allowing me uh, um, late admission. Um, I want to acknowledge the previous um, woman, Mrs. Allen. I 
obviously understand it would be very distressing. I am speaking today against the ban and I acknowledge that she would have had some really horrible things to deal with. Um, and I am coming from this from a perspective of um, doing activism for the last decade, um, meeting a wide range of people with multiple social problems. And I want to bring attention to the fact that this council does a welcome to country but this ban, this 24-hour alcohol ban, will vastly affect Aboriginal people. If you increase the ban in this, in this matter, if you do a 24-hour ban, you will not stop the drinking of these people. If you have public drunkenness, violence and fighting, it's obviously a terrible issue. But legislating a 24-hour hour ban and then creating fines for these people who have no money, because you're not going to get the money, you can fine them all you like, but you're not going to get that money to the council, is not going to fix the problem. I want to bring attention to the fact that many of these Aboriginal people and um, destitute people, if they get fines upon fines upon fines, a lot of them end up thousands of dollars in debt because there is absolutely no way for them to pay it. Uh, there is not enough alcohol counselling, dry beds or detox beds in this state. The mental health system is absolutely shattered. I've personally known of people who cannot get mental health assistance in this state and have actually had to go into state to New South Wales to get assistance. So this is a complex problem that is not going to be fixed by a 24 hour ban. The ban will also affect people going about their normal day. For instance, if you have a picnic of 20 people, you know, someone who has phone credit and, you know, and can actually speak up properly for themselves, can be articulate, they might be able to get this permit. But someone who doesn't have phone credit, who's not literate in um, speaking on the phone or have proper English skills are not going to be able to ring up a council and get a permit. So why is it okay for someone to go and have a bottle of wine or a couple of bottles of wine in a park and enjoy themselves, but then a bunch of people who might be having a tinny um, is, is seen as not okay? I believe this is a class issue. Um, I believe if this blunt hammer of a ban, a 24-hour ban is enacted, you'll get many more problems. For instance, a lot of animosity towards the police rather than calming a situation down. You will have police and um, people in the parklands become very agitated. So rather than calming a situation down, you will have the situation where there will already be animosity rather than try to offer people help and support and maybe send them in the right direction. So really what we need is more detox beds, more mental health um, facilities and, and help and support. I do not believe a ban will actually help this and I just would like the council to consider that when you're voting today. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Uh, members, that concludes our deputations. Uh, there are no petitions. Uh, members, with the, uh, with the uh, numbers that have joined us tonight, on a few issues. I'm going to, with your permission, bring a few uh, items forward. Um, I'd like to start with 12.2, uh, which is the unsolicited bid pro uh, proposal, Sorry, followed by 12.1. We do with 12.1 first, as listed on the agenda. I think we should deal with the needs analysis discussion first. Um, I'm going to do 12.2 first, because the needs analysis talks to 12.2 but I think that they're related. 12.1 is the needs analysis, which explains and sets the tone. I think that should go to Councillor Abian. I'm happy to move 12.2, Lord Mayor. As you've suggested as the chair of the meeting. Well, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, I, I dissent from that decision. I think 12.1 should be first. Um, members, show of hands. Um, I was going to go to 12.2 first. Uh, and then go to 12.1. Uh, members, those happy with 12.2 first? Thank you. Uh, we will go to 12.2. Um, Lord Mayor, a point of order, if I may. Um, uh, the motion that it is proposed that Council considers 
um, I would argue, um, is ultra-virus. Um, it is a very clear uh, direction of council that uh, this meeting was uh, to be preceded by an agenda and papers, which included, and I quote from uh, the motion, detailed concepts for their proposed facility to council for public release and the agenda and papers for the council meeting to be held on the 10th of December 2019. Those papers came out last Friday, uh, three days in advance of this, and they were not included. And it is my contention that if we are to consider these matters, which are not included in the papers as directed by the council, then it would require a motion on notice to include the uh, uh, the papers. And clearly there's no time for emotional notice. So I will go to the CEO. Through you, Chair. It's not my understanding that a, a rescission motion is required. Uh, the resolution of council states that if it does not receive the, the above, it reserves the right not to accept the Adelaide Football Club proposal. That right is yours at this meeting tonight. Uh, well, Lord Mayor, I'm suggesting to you that standing orders and regulations don't permit you to put this plan to this meeting of council. So I will ask for some governance advice on that. My understanding is that it goes to the intent of the motion, so CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, that is what I've explained earlier. I believe that the report does go to the intent of the resolution of council. Um, the response of council is entirely in your hands. Um, perhaps we can get some um, governance advice from Rudy. Through the Lord Mayor, that's great what the CEO is just advising. So, members, again, I'll go to the floor. Are we happy to accept 12.2 well, uh, no, uh, as an item of business Lord on Mayor? tonight's agenda? Lord Mayor, uh, I'm asking, is that your ruling? No, I think your question was whether this was ultra vires, uh, Councillor Martin, <laughs> and I've been uh, advised that it wasn't. Uh, then I, I uh, move that uh, we dissent from your ruling. I dissent from the ruling. Lord Mayor, I have a, I've put my hand up first. He's called a point of order, so I have the floor as the mover of the motion. If you wish no, to that's... accept a seconder, you can do that first. Uh, Lord Mayor, the regulations require that immediately a motion is moved, then it, it is open to councillors um, to raise an objection, as I am doing, to your ruling that this matter be considered. And my objection has been seconded uh, by another councillor. Thank you, I will hand back to the CEO. Through Lord Mayor, it is required that you rule on the point of order, um, and that is undertaken through. I'll just get Rudy to explain the process. Through the Lord Mayor, Section 28 of the meeting regulations, the presiding member may call to order a member who is in breach of the Act or those uh, regulations. Uh, a member may draw to the attention of the presiding member a breach of the Act or these regulations. I must state me briefly must state briefly the nature of the alleged breach. So I understand that Councillor Martin is saying that uh, there is a breach of the guiding principles. I am. Uh, point of order then takes precedence over all other business until determined. The presiding member will rule on a point of order if an objection is taken to the ruling of the presiding member. A motion that the ruling not be agreed with must be moved immediately. And Lord Mayor, I have done that to your ruling. You ruled that we were proceeding with 12.2. I'm objecting and saying to you that I dissent from that ruling. That has been seconded by Councillor Moran. Let's discuss it. So members, we go through a normal process. So Councillor can now speak to that and then I'll go to Councillor Moran. Well, look, Lord Mayor, uh, my contention is fairly simple. On the 19th of November, this council agreed as a, an ultimatum, if you like, to the uh, Adelaide Football Club that we would, one, set a deadline for the Adelaide Football Club to submit detailed concepts for their proposed facility to council for public release in the agenda and papers for the council meeting to be held on the 10th of December. Now, those papers were not included. Indeed, the first time I've seen anything in this proposal from the Adelaide Football Club was about half an hour ago in the Colonel Light Room. Uh, this is 
this is a clear breach of the intention of council. And if those papers weren't, be, uh, weren't provided, as the council directed that they be provided by this date, then it is open to this council to refuse to accept the matter. Now, you, you may, if you wish, defer this matter and place a motion on notice that we will consider this, but you can't do it tonight. There's no time for a motion on notice. This matter has to be deferred. And I suggest to you, Lord Mayor, that this matter is deferred until the new year. It would be more appropriate at that time. It's not satisfactory. In fact, it is patently rude to the elected body to present all of this detail as was presented to us in the Colonel Lightroom and somehow expect us to be magically across it, to understand all of the detail, to authorise a public consultation, to ask ratepayers what they think about it when we do not understand much about it either. Lord Mayor, this matter must be deferred. You are bound by the standing orders and the regulations to do so. And I invite you to take that decision. Uh, if you do not take that decision, then I'm happy for it to go to a vote. But I would have thought that you can display some leadership by interpreting the orders as they were intended and deferring this matter. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran? Yes, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I'm surprised that this has even been argued. Um, this is uh, correct procedurally, what Councillor Martin is saying. I suspect that Team Adelaide will ignore that and continue, and I will put a complaint in about that. Um, it's actually a gift, Lord Mayor, if you look at it. You should have taken the needs analysis first. That is the right step. That's why it appeared in our agenda in yeah. that order. Um, we cannot and should not go to consultation on what we heard in that room. There's no detail of what the aquatic centre is. The only building we're interested in is the aquatic centre. They didn't know who was going to run it. They didn't know how many pools were in it because Ma they Ma only... Sorry, Councillor Moran, we're not talking to that. We're talking about the point of order, whether we accept this tonight or not. Yes, exactly. So we should, as I said, to explain what I was saying, then that this is a gift because the needs analysis should go first. So get rid of this motion, put it in the new year. We go out with the needs analysis. Uh, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're, you're so we're talking to whether we accept or reject this. We're, we're talking yes. to whether we accept or reject this exactly. item. So that's why it is an advantage if you uphold procedural correctness because it is the right thing to do anyway in the right order. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm really perplexed um, by uh, the way that things have unfolded tonight. As Councillor Martin has said, I remember the debate back on the 19th of November. There was a lot of tough talk, Lord Mayor, about us setting deadlines. Um, well, a deadline means you meet it. It's not, you know, the dog ate my homework and I turn up on the night with a proposal. What we have here is a breach of faith with this council by the Crows but also a failure of council to actually enforce its own decision. Council said on the 19th that we would set a deadline for the Adelaide Football Club to submit a detailed concept for their proposed facility for council, the public release in the agenda and the papers for the council meeting to be held tonight. Well, the papers were released on Friday and there was nothing included. What were we as elected members to do in preparation for this meeting, Lord Mayor? We had to wait until we turned up tonight before we saw a series of pretty pictures with scanned detail. And now, as a result of the process that you have forced upon us with the support of the majority of this council, we're prevented from even talking about the needs analysis before we talk about the proposal from the Crows. This is a contemptuous way to treat elected representatives. It's a contemptuous way to treat the public and quite frankly sets a very, very disturbing precedent for our management of public space. In the future, are we going to have proposals like this coming to council on the We are talking the about this one. Well, Thank this you, sets Councilor a Sims. precedent, Lord Mayor, with respect, this sets a precedent for how we manage our public space and what it's the standard is. It's not about the standard this is. is about whether we accept or reject this tonight. Uh, thank you, definitely, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I think it's a bit rich for councillors to come into this chamber and suggest that we should not be going to consultation on this and that we should put this off, considering 
considering that point, point we, order, Lord Mayor, that, we is, are, that is not what Thank you, Councillor Sims. I'm chairing. Sorry, Councillor Martin. I am Councillor Martin. I'm chairing the meeting. Deputy Lord Mayor, I we are talking as to whether I'm we accept or reject. I'm aware what we're talking to. I seconded this motion, and I can tell you that the motion that was passed and us receiving that report for this meeting today satisfies the intent of that motion. The intent of that motion was, have, was to have publicly available information, which we just saw before, in preparation for this meeting so that we could- Members of the, the gallery. Public, so that we could consult to the public. And I think efforts to frustrate that attempt to consult with the public really fly in the face of what this chamber is about, especially considering we just heard a deputation that highlighted twice certain councillors in this room wanted to consult to the public and this council chamber said we don't have enough detail. We now have the detail. It's in line with the motion that was passed. And those same councillors are suggesting that we can the public consultation. How hypocritical, how absurd. This is an absurd procedural debate to be had. And if I'm able to, I'll move that this motion be put immediately and we move well, on with the yes. actual agenda. Thank you. Well, you're not able to because you've already spoken. Um, I will uh, give one more warning to the gallery. Thank you. Um, please, if you are going to stay through this meeting, which I hope you do, um, because you are very welcome in the chamber, I will ask you please to keep your silence and not enter the debate or to chant or to yell out. Thank you very much. Um, now, we are deciding, uh, sorry, Councillor um, Abiyad, then I'll talk to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to first ask a question to get some clarity because I'm a bit confused about the point of order. Um, is the point of order regarding uh, shuffling 2.1 and 2.2? Or is the point of order in regards to not accepting 2.2 at all? Because that for me is unclear and I need to know before I debate the issue. My understanding is that it is about whether or not we accept 2.2. Is that correct, Councillor Martin? 12.2. Um, it is 12.2. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yes or no? Thank you. No, I'm still unclear. Because he just, are, Councillor Martin just said before, and I said, is it about shuffling them? And he said, yes, no, and he said, no. No, no. My understanding, Councillor Abiyad, is that we are debating whether to accept or reject 12.2. Okay, so with that regard, then I'll focus exactly my debate on that, because what was debated by some other councillors is that the needs analysis needs to be addressed before dealing with the AFC's proposal. That's what I heard, hence the confusion. But now that I'm clear, the agenda of the meeting, although produced on Friday, is dealt with today. And the intention of the motion as part of the debate was to make sure that part of an unsolicited bid process, there was an opportunity to conclude that, which what we've been told by the CEO earlier that's been cut short for us as a result of that motion of council to take this out to public consultation and hear from the community their thoughts with regards to the AFC proposal, which I'm delighted to hear that Councillor Martin said this is the first time he has seen a proposal um, in his opening Thank statement. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Um, we we so, are debating whether to accept or reject. So with that regard, Lord Mayor, and with regards to the motion put so far to date and the intent of Councillor Kuros is that this meeting of council is to hear the deliberations of elected members and make a decision based on the proposal that we've seen and go out to public consultation if the council wishes so. So I'd ask members to support the intent of that motion, to support the item that's been tabled, tabled on the agenda and put to this council meeting. This is not about making decisions, this is about taking this to consultation. Thank you, Councillor Abiad. I have Councillor Kerr. Uh, well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, Look, uh, I'm looking at the wording of the uh, resolution of 19 November, and uh, I would remind councillors that it is important uh, to keep practicalities in mind. That is something uh, that the courts will also uh, keep in mind. Uh, we have a we have a suggestion that uh, we have a suggestion that there is a motion here that is ultra vires. It is always open uh, to members or anyone else. Uh, to seek judicial review at any point. But I would point to the wording of that motion. It says, uh, the Adelaide Football Club uh, uh, shall submit detailed concepts. Now, the word uh, the words detailed and the word concepts are, are highly germane here. I would say at this stage that uh, what we have received are in fact concepts. Uh, I would say that any practical reading of Councillor, this, of this we, wording- Councillor, we are, we are actually just debated whether or not we accept or reject 12.2. 
Uh, well, well, I, I, I would suggest that we do we do accept uh, at this stage. Uh, I, I, I do say that it is prudent uh, to keep in mind any any uh, request for judicial review. But, but my reading of the motion, that, uh, as it stands, is that there is sufficient leeway to allow for what has been presented to adequately meet the uh, the resolution of, of council prior to this motion. And, and I and I see no reason to defer any further. And I would and I would caution uh, councillors in indulging uh, in indulging. Uh, petty and spe uh, uh, you know uses uh, 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 um, procedural uses to stymie something that is entirely political in, in, in Thank you, uh, Councillor Kerr. Um, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, as the mover of the motion, I, I stand here to talk about my intent, and the intent was um, to actually get moving with a consultation. So the fact that the papers, uh, well, we've got the papers today, we've got the, they're, they're in by the 10th in council, um, ready for us to consult on, that was my intention. I want to move forward to be able to produce documentation to the public, to the community, and take it out there with them, with the reports, with what the, uh, the AFC are presenting, so we can gauge from the community what is it that they want so we can move forward. That was the intention of the motion. Thank you for talking to that. Your motion, Councillor Kouros. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to, uh, sorry, Councillor Donovan. Just a quick question, Lord Mayor. If we reject 12.2, what would be the process from here? So, so at the moment, so I have said we'll accept it, and so you're voting on whether my ruling stands or not. So your question is, if it's voted against, um, then we will go back to the chamber. What would be, Lord Mayor, we're voting can you explain that again? Sorry. So, so I made a ruling that we would accept it. Councillor Martin has uh, said that he doesn't believe that we are delivering in accordance with the motion on notice, and therefore we shouldn't accept the proposal or to actually debate this item tonight. So that's what we are debating, whether we debate the item tonight or not, as per my ruling. And so just for clarity, Lord Mayor, if we don't debate it tonight, if it fails, then it would go to the next council meeting, or what would be the what would be the next step? For you, Lord Mayor, we'd need a, a resolution of council to determine when you'd want it to come back to council. Uh, so, members, if there's no further speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, some of my colleagues seem to be a bit confused about what I'm proposing. Um, there is no need for a judicial review. We can we can leave the judiciary alone, uh, and it is not misleading in any way. Um, the uh, the motion of Councillor Kouros, not her intention. And look, you know, intentions are one thing. What she actually proposed and what she persuaded all of us to agree to was that. In these papers, there would be, and I quote again, um, a detailed concept for their proposed facility for public release in the agenda and papers for the council meeting on the 10th of December. But there are none. They're not here. How can we possibly consider that? Where, where are the concept plans? What, what, are we, what are we recommending that we debate? They are not in the papers. We saw something on a board in another room about half an hour ago, and that was not sufficient according to this, this decision of council on the 19th of November. Um, members, look, it's very clear what you do. You have to vote in favour. I have no illusions, by the way, Lord Mayor. The team will vote this down. Team Adelaide always votes Thank down sexual Thank you, Councillor Martin. We, have you finished summing up? No, I haven't finished, Lord Mayor. <laughs> what, what will follow is that this council will then ask for the matter to be considered uh, properly at its next meeting. Now, you may choose to call another meeting in the next 48, 72 hours or whatever, uh, with a properly constituted motion, or you may call a meeting for January next year when the schedule comes out. Um, it can be the first item that we consider. But I'm saying to you that procedurally, this is not correct. It is an abusive process. And in fact, that abusive process has characterized this whole episode from beginning to where we are now. <laughs> Thank you.
Members of the gallery, that is the last third final warning for this evening. I do hope you will join us for the rest of the evening, uh, but I do ask you please to observe the chamber and the rules of the chamber. Uh, members, you're now voting as to whether we accept or reject um, Councillor Martin's uh, deferral or um, challenge to the uh, ruling. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? Oh. Okay, that fails. Yeah. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. We have all night. Um, Councillor Abbeyard, you moved. I looked for a second. I think that was Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you second? Councillor Abbeyard. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm speaking to item 12.2. And just to note on record, we are receiving a draft um, Adelaide Football Club proposal. We are noting that the Adelaide Football Club has not been provided with the needs analysis. We are noting that the administration will provide a copy of the needs analysis and what we are endorsing if this is successful uh, tonight uh, is a public consultation process that will go out and take this to the public for us to be able to have that discussion. So to take the public um, and the chamber on a little bit of a journey, uh, which I think is really important, Lord Mayor, an unsolicited bid process was put in place for council to have opportunities to be able to be approached by community groups, by business, by anyone to be able to do business with council and engage council. Now, council is not an enterprise in the sense where it's here to make money. Council, when it pays dividends, is about dividends for the community and outcomes for the community that we measure based on the decisions that we make. As a result of the un un uh, uh, unsolicited bid process, there's been an approach, and the approach was by the Adelaide Football Club. Now, that approach may or may not have to do with previous councils where Councillor Moran have noted for us on record that she's asked previous administrations to approach the club, where she's gone on record publicly to ask them to move to the Aquatic Centre, whether that has prompted that discussion or not, or this has been a discussion as a result of the redevelopment in West Lakes and the changes that are happening there on the ground. Nevertheless, there's been a process that was conducted and put in place for which the unsolicited process was triggered to be able to deliver an outcome. Now, throughout that process, we've heard from councillors that we have been hiding things, we've made decisions behind closed doors, we have seen proposals, we have seen concepts, we have seen, we have seen, but tonight we have heard the complete opposite from some of those members that have been telling us all along that we have seen everything and we've received everything and the decision's already made. What this tells us tonight is that, as we've heard from those councillors, this is the first time they have seen the proposal. And this is the honest truth. This is the first time that council has been able to consider a proposal and see a presentation from the Adelaide Football Club and be able to understand what's been entailed. Now, part of the unsolicited bid process, which was reminded to us by the CEO, but also by some of the other elected members, such as Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran, that have moved many motions to go out to public consultation now because the proposal is with us. We know what's going to happen. Well, tonight we do. Tonight, tonight we do. Tonight we do. Tonight we actually do. For the first time. So, sorry, Councillor Abia. For the uh, first time, Lord Mayor. For the first members time, Lord of Mayor, the gallery. 
Okay, throw us out if you like. Thank you. Um, members, I'll just actually have a short recess while we clear the gallery. Thank you. Lord, Lord Mayor, I do object to that ruling. I object, I object to your clearing the... If the members are happy to be quiet so that we can hear the debate, they are welcome to stay. As I have said, please, members of the gallery, you are welcome to join us this evening. Please, if you can keep your comments and your heckling to yourself so that I can actually hear the members of my chamber make their arguments. We are here for debate and discussion, and that is exactly what we are going to have. Councillor Abia, my apologies. Um, we will just restart the clock at two minutes. Thank you. The beauty of Australia, Lord Mayor, is we have a democracy. And I have heard very clearly tonight from the gallery, whether they're descending, uh, dissenting with regards to this, um, I've heard their views over the last uh, few months with regards to their lack of support for this proposal. I've heard from Councillor Martin, I've heard from Councillor Sims and Councillor Morgan with regards to the complete opposition of anything to do with a re-change to the aquatic centre by the Crows or by anyone else for that matter because it's privatisation. I have heard that very loud and clear and I'm respectful of that but this will provide us the opportunity to go out to the wider South Australian public and our ratepayers to also ask their opinion because there isn't 1.7 million South Australians in the gallery, there isn't 25,000 ratepayers that are sitting right here in the gallery and sure there is, there isn't 300,000 city visitors that are sitting here in the gallery. There isn't a minority and that minority's view is 100% respected. I respect your view. Please respect, please respect the views of the chamber and the Lord Mayor and that of the rest of the public, just like you, will have the opportunity to respond to the proposal by the Crows and also to respond to a needs analysis. This is the beauty of democracy and tonight for the first time on the leave here, we have an opportunity with a proposal to go out to the public and be able to consult on their views, be it they would like to see a facility there that would deliver on community outcomes or not. And if it's not, I will also respect that because for me, I don't have a view. I currently don't have a view. I currently do not have a view with regards to where this would go. I still need to see a significant community outcome with regards to this project and with regards to this process that will deliver over and above than what we currently have seen. Now, I will reserve my right on my view once I hear from the rest of the community, not just the minority group, with regards to what their view is, if I can just request for an extension, Lord Mayor. No. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and the most important thing about this process, Lord Mayor, is there will be an opportunity for everyone to be heard. And when the consultation comes back to this chamber, if this motion is successful tonight, the views of the galleries will be heard, the views of our ratepayers will be heard, our city visitors, and also wider South Australia. Because as we've heard tonight, there is a significant number of visitors that are coming to this centre at the expense of our ratepayers where only 9% of our ratepayers are using the centre, which is going to come at a significant cost to the people that are funding this aquatic facility. And let me remind councillors, $79 million of $100 million in rates come from Central Ward. So I will make no apology for taking a fierce stance with regards to how that money is expended. And it's important we're accountable commercially, just like we are accountable from a community outcome perspective. I will remain on record if this does not deliver on a community outcome over and above what we currently have for generations to come, I will not support the Adelaide Football Club proposal and submission to this council. And I hope the public consultation will be wide for us to receive varying views so we can make an informed decision later on in the year. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll reserve my right. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, we've heard a, a lot of uh, lofty statements about democracy tonight, but what a joke that is. This is a process that is being designed to achieve a particular outcome. And we've heard a lot about consultation. We're about to hear what the community think and really welcome hearing their views. What are we going to ask them, Lord Mayor? Well, we're going to put something on your say. We're going to have a newspaper ad and a media release and we'll do some posters. 
We're going to ask them, in your opinion, does the initial response provided by the Adelaide Football Club align with the guiding principles? So presumably the community will see the pretty pictures we've seen tonight and be asked to comment. The initial response provided by the AFC has not been informed by the needs analysis. Taking that into consideration, what's your view on the concept? And finally, please provide any further feedback. What a comprehensive consultation process, Lord Mayor. Now, Councillor Abiad took us on a bit of a walk down memory lane where he talked about the process that's led us to this point. Well, he admitted a few details, Lord Mayor. Back in April, when this issue first appeared on Council's radar, back when we had the unsolicited bid as submitted by the Crows, I proposed that we begin an immediate consultation with the community and ask them a simple threshold question. Do you support having a commercial enterprise on the parklands? What's your view? I was told at that time we couldn't consult on that, Lord Mayor, we didn't have enough detail. We couldn't possibly ask the community what they thought about that threshold question. So Councillor Martin tried again a few months later and he was blocked again, once again by the majority voting bloc on this council. Then we had guiding principles that were endorsed by council without any community consultation that are being relied upon uh, tonight. And then at the last meeting, Councillor Kouros sprung a motion on us that set this deadline that hasn't been complied with. And I tried to amend it to ask again that we have consultation looking at the other options. Well, that was blocked. Then tonight, I propose that before we discuss the Crows plan, as listed in our public agenda, we talk about the needs analysis, because that discussion would then inform how we dealt with the Crows. Again, that was blocked again by the majority faction on this council. What is very clear is that there has been a process designed to manufacture consent of the community, a process designed to get the particular outcome that some people on this council want. We've heard from Shane Sodi tonight from the Adelaide Parklands Association that there's been a poll commissioned that has shown that an overwhelming majority want us to look at other options before we go down this path. Why on earth, Lord Mayor, would we be going down this path on the basis of such a scant presentation, on the basis of such limited information, when no undertakings can be made? And I think the whole process is a joke, Lord Mayor. I'm disgusted by the way that this has been handled, and that sits on the shoulders of all of those councillors that have blocked those of us over the last 12 months who have tried to adopt an open consultation process. This Council is a Sons. nightmare for Chris. Do, a you night wish, do you wish for extra time? Yes, I do, Lord Mayor. Members? Thank you. Thank you. This is a nightmare before Christmas, Lord Mayor, for the people of the City of Adelaide. It's been very badly handled from the get-go and it sets a very disturbing precedent for how we handle public land. Now, I won't be supporting this. I oppose this motion. I oppose this sham consultation and I oppose the dud deal that's been put to us tonight. And Lord Mayor, I stand with Denise and I stand with the community and I encourage other councillors to do the same. Councillor Moran. Um, I will reserve my right. Uh, members. Councillor Martin. Look, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, I just want to expand on something that was addressed by Councillor Sims, and that is that some people have been quite disingenuous uh, about this whole matter. The, uh, the consultation is a sham. It doesn't address the threshold question, and that is, do you want commercial development on the park grants? Not do you want commercial development and a good community outcome. Do you want commercial development on the park grants? And we're not doing that. In fact, we're saying to people, um, look, this plan isn't complete. It could change because we're going to add this and that, but what do you think of the plan? Well, I think it's a joke too. I think it's an absolute joke of a consultation. And yes, it is true that people like me and Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran are concerned about the parklands. And look, Lord Mayor, this quote, I, I think this sums it up. Our city's parkland surrounds are unique and need to be protected and celebrated. We need to complete the walking and running trails, design more places for passive recreation, well-being and reflection. They're your words, Lord Mayor. And you changed your mind. You changed your mind. You've been supporting this proposal. Lord Mayor, let me just say that 
this proposal will be the political end of Team Adelaide. You, you Team Adelaide people are just digging a big hole. And there is Councillor a maximum Martin, politics. Councillor Martin, are you speaking to the motion? I'll speak to you, Lord Mayor. Um, Thank you. There is a maximum in politics that says um, when you've dug a hole and dug yourself into it, you stop digging. Well, Lord Mayor, uh, the leader of the faction, Councillor Abbiot, is still handing out shovels to Team Adelaide to keep digging. Councillor, we're speaking to the motion, not about gardening. I'm, I'm speaking Can to the motion. Can we actually Lord speak Mayor? to the I'm motion? Suggesting, I'm suggesting to the members of Team Adelaide that an appropriate course of action uh, Lord Mayor, you don't like me mentioning Team Adelaide. Is I would like problem? you to speak to the motion, no. Councillor. Oh, well, uh, I am trying to do that, but as always, you keep interrupting me and whenever I mention oh. Team Adelaide. Oh. Can, may I finish? Please. Thank you. Now, Team Adelaide absolutely needs, if it has any political mass at all, <coughs> to say, we were wrong. We have seen the community mood. We have read the opinion poll, a soundly based opinion poll, which says most people, three quarters of the people in this city polled by Reachtel have concluded they don't agree with you. They think you're out of step. Now, any sensible politician would say, we got it wrong and find some sort of excuse to dig themselves out of the hole. This lot keep arguing for it. They even look a gift horse in the mouth when someone stands up and says, we don't have any real basis on which to debate this. They could have, they could have allowed it to go. Instead, they're sitting here arguing and you watch the hands go up when it, it comes up for a vote. You watch the hands go up. Councillor uh, Kerr. Uh, uh, well, thanks Lord Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm listening uh, to, to, to those arguments, and I'm just scratching my head and wondering. This is a very, uh, this is a rather curious grab bag of uh, positions that's been taken uh, in opposition at this juncture. Uh, we have got, we have got arguments. Uh, we have got arguments about procedure and arguments about democracy and arguments, uh, Lord Mayor, about the public uh, being allowed to decide. And at the same time, we, we are being told that the, the, the argument, uh, sorry, the public have already decided. And guess who's telling us how the public have decided? It's Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims, Lord Mayor. That, uh, that to me is the intractable problem that I'm faced with, the, with, with this argument at this juncture. It, it is not consistent. Are we being told, oh, you must say no, you must recognise you made a mistake in this juncture. The public are against this, they don't want this, they don't want that. Uh, and at the same time, we're being told, well, uh, if we do proceed, we are not allowing the, car, the, the public to have their say. This is cart before the horse stuff, Lord Mayor. This is absolutely basic stuff that is being failed. It is absolute. It is an absolute failure of logic, Lord Mayor. And I have a question. I have a question which, which I think, uh, uh, I think will help the chamber. It is germane. That question is to the administration. Um, it is to the administration. We have been presented with a sort of key threshold question. In your opinion. Does the public consultation prevent the public from having a say as to whether or not they want a commercial development on the parklands, given that there is already a commercial development on the parklands in question? CEO. Through the chair, the, um, the public engagement description that was read out was deliberately to enable any comments to be received on any aspect of the proposal. Thank you, CEO. I'll uh, just stop there. Thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Uh, just to um, clear that up, uh, Councillor Carer, um, what we object to is a private commercial activity on the parklands. I know that Team Adelaide has thrown that. It's already a commercial activity. It is run by public instrumentality. It is not run by a private firm. That is quite different. And I do agree that the car is indeed uh, before the horse. We should, um, and the Crows, I feel sorry for them, they were struggling there. They, they've only just seen our needs analysis. So they've been flying blind trying to guess what we might need. We've only just seen the needs analysis. So what we should do is go out with the needs analysis for public consultation. When that comes back and guides a revision of that in line with the public, 
Then we give that to the crows, then they go and fine tune their, um, their plants if we so wish to. We did, should have started, and there's no illogicality of the non, the independent members. We move that you go and ask the public the yes, no. Do you want private commercial activity on the parklands? Now, I think that answer would have come back a clear no, we do not. Um, but we won't know that. We'll have to get, we'll have to, uh, we'll never find it out because the consultation is rubbish and it is push polling as as, as per we usually do. Um, now, just to correct a few things, um, going through, I think I, I completely agree with what Councillor Simpson, Councillor Martin have said so far, so I've just added a few things. We saw no details. The crows couldn't tell us how much water space there was. Um, that's because they haven't seen the needs analysis. They, they, what are we actually consulting on? Nothing really. Two, we're consulting on the fact that two thirds of the building will be Crows administrative and private sporting facilities. The rest is the when we asked about the aquatic centre, which is really the only thing we are interested in. Well, we don't really know now. We haven't really seen the needs analysis. It might be big, it might be small. We might run it, but we don't really want to. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what we are actually consulting on. And also, while um, Councillor Curris was, was hailed as a tough stance, why does it have to be today? What on earth is the rush? Why are we? It's completely mucked everything up. We should defer this till the new year, till we've consulted on the needs analysis, which is whether you want, what, what sort of um, facility do you want? Now we're consulting on something we don't even know. And as I said, it's not fair on the, on the crows. Um, these things get away from you really quickly. Look at the next generation, which was the Memorial Drive Tennis Club. They came to us and said, please let the private uh, rich person take it over and it'll still be available. They were out with that within six weeks. It's now a car dealership. It has a bar, it has colonic irrigation. It is nothing like we uh, expected. Um, this should have some, this as Hassam said, is not an unsolicited bid. Uh, back in the day, um, we w were sick of managing the aquatic centre and were looking around for somebody else to manage it, not to rebuild it, buy it from us and run as a private thing. I suggested the Crows, we also suggested the YMCA, and I think we joked, do you think the Crows would be silly enough to manage our aquatic centre with the amount of money it loses? And we joke <laughs> about that. Um, this is nothing like... Um, I just have one minute. Members, um, members, are you happy to give council? I'm very concerned about the um, way this has gone through. I'm very concerned, and I'm not pointing the finger, but I'm very concerned that there's been an ongoing social relationship with our administration with the Crows that we had no idea. It spans the last administration too. That's very concerning. I'm concerned that the head of the Crows says that he's had ongoing, open talks with our, with the, uh, with the council. Yes, Sam, I, I, it is the first time I have seen these plans, but it's not the first time anybody in this room has seen the plans, um, I suspect. Uh, but I really want to pull um, Hassam up on uh, the ex-Deputy Lord Mayor up on this. To say that the people in the audience are not representatives and their views are irrelevant um, is very, very... These are the people that are passionate about the park plans. It's very I'm sorry, insulting. Ray, They're not... Just, a, just a point of order. Yeah. Uh, just to correct that on record, I did not say those words. I said I respect their view and their democratic right. Just Your words were exactly, um, ex-Deputy Lord, Lord Mayor, that there are thousands of other people that will be asked and they probably have different views. You were disrespectful to the gallery and saying that they were a minority group and they weren't representative of views. I suggest to you, as I live in my electorate, I work in my electorate, which is unusual on this council, I see it every day. I know all those people because they also live and work and I know what their views are and I know if it's a proper consultation what the answer will be. It'll be no public commercial activity on, uh, sorry, private commercial activity on the park lands. I agree with what Councillor Martin said. It's a bullish way this council's behaving. You had to get out of jail free card at the beginning. You've gone against procedural fairness and correctness. You could have hidden behind that and done it properly. You haven't. Not one of you will get into the next election. And Sandy, I'll be very surprised if you got a vote too. Um, that would be Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin.
Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to propose an amendment. So adding on to item four, uh, to comma at the end of guiding principles, pending the inclusion of a specific threshold question on whether the public supports inclusion of the Crows headquarters as part of the Aquatic Centre redevelopment and including relevant questions relating to the- Might just get to slow down just a little bit. So if you can see where that's up to, councillors. So pending inclusion, a specific threshold question on whether the public supports inclusion of the Crows headquarters as part of the Aquatic Centre redevelopment and inclusion of relevant questions relating to the needs analysis. I might get you to slow that one down as well. And include... Sorry. Inclusion of relevant questions relating to the needs analysis. I'm happy to accept that as part of the initial recommendation, because that was what the CEO said anyway. Well, the inclusion of the threshold question is not in the draft questions. Uh, the CEO inferred that that's what the intention, that's what they'll be doing. It wasn't in there. It's not in yep. So sure. it's the, the way that it's worded at the moment is that it's, it, it is a... a so procedurally, Lord Mayor, am I able to include this? If Councillor Donovan would like to, for me to include it. Um, so I'll have to deal with it as an amendment sure. because it's got a, a pending word in there. So I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Deputy. Oh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I've already seconded. Um, I think I've only got Councillor Ho or Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros? Yeah, and Councillor Penong, no, sorry. Councillor Kouros is seconded. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So I think based on the conversations that the debate that we've had thus far, um, part of the issue that has arisen is that with the uh, process that has been followed, we've missed out on the critical step of asking that threshold question. This gives us the opportunity to ask the threshold question of do we want this on the parklands or not? And to word it in a specific way, so at the moment the indicative questions are uh, primarily qualitative. I think we need this quantitative yes, no uh, question included within the consultation. That gives us a very definite starting point um, as to whether or not we wish to continue with the process. Um, unfortunately, due to, the, due to how things have unfolded, we now have a, a you know, part of a plan. We don't have a detailed plan, but we can at least find out the, the public's perception on this threshold question. That allows us then to uh, have some more time also to <coughs> include within the consultation the opportunity to get feedback on the current needs analysis as it is, which is will be, I assume, debating next in item 12.1. Um, there will, by necessity, be, if we do at some point, uh, continue on to uh, receive a detailed proposal and if the threshold question is answered in such a way that we continue through this process, 30 seconds, um, then uh, we would of course have to come back for a second consultation on a detailed proposal because at this point in time, as has rightfully been argued, we can't possibly ask for decent feedback on something that is not responding to the needs analysis that has not yet gone out. So this gives us the opportunity to ask the threshold question uh, and proceed from there. And Councillor Donovan. Councillor Cross, did you wish to speak? Is that right? Is that right? Oh, Councillor Kiros. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I, I raise uh, a serious concern about this amendment, uh, and that is uh, because what we are being asked to do uh, is include a uh, specifically enumerated threshold question, uh, which will turn the nature of the consultation into um, a kind of referendum that is open to activism from unrepresented importance. <laughs> Thank you for making my point. I would say, Lord Mayor, I would say, Lord Mayor, I would thank the gallery. I would thank the gallery. I would thank the gallery, Lord Mayor, for making my point exactly, Lord Mayor. So I caution. Sorry, I'm sorry, Councillor Kerr. I will actually ask you to stop there. I'm sorry, uh, Damien. I'm going to ask you to leave the chamber.
Can you please? Thank you. Thank you. And members, um, we can have a short recess if you like while the member leaves the chamber. So thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We will ask you now to leave the chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Can you start the clock again? Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, as I was saying, uh, I, I raise uh, significant reservations about this amendment because it opens it opens uh, the decision to uh, it, well it changes uh, the nature of the consultation and it allows a referendum which allows for activism from unrepresentative quarters and I seriously uh, caution the chamber from accepting something uh, that will allow the will of the people the majority of the people that is all South Australians all people who live in Adelaide, uh, all stakeholders from having an effective say because you've, you've, you've enabled something that is uh, designated a threshold question. So that is my concern is about the democracy of this actual provision. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. <laughs> um, I'm not sure who was first. Yes. Councillor Moran? I have never heard such a statement in my life. You, you carry that off well, Jesse. That was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. This is going out on a public consultation to um, people. Why would asking, do you want a private commercial activity in the parklands, bring out um, act activists? Have a look. Have a look at the people. They're, they're your rate payers, Jesse. They're your rate payers, and that is the question we wanted. Please allow Councillor Moran to This is the, the question we wanted to ask right at the beginning. I will vote for Helen's amendment, um, Councillor Donovan's amendment. I will not vote for the um, substantive because her amendment is trying to stick a band-aid over a monster. Um, and a monster with a band-aid is better than nothing. But to suggest that this opens the door to activism is a, a, a high point in um, abuse of your ratepayers. I have never heard such rubbish in all my life. Councillor Sims. I agree with what Anne said. Um, <laughs> Lord, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I'm wondering, uh, before I comment on this, whether I could suggest a, a variation, and that is the reference to uh, an inclusion of relevant questions Rather than the term questions, could I substitute that for options from the needs analysis? I'm sorry, Councillor, whereabouts is that? So uh, in the red wording, an inclusion of relevant questions, it says currently, could I say inclusion of the options from the needs analysis? Well, because there are specific options presented in the needs analysis, Lord Mayor, there's four options that are presented. Councillor Donovan. And Councillor Kouros, I have to ask the mover and the seconder if they accept it. I'm not sure that's the intent. I mean, it's, this is the unfortunately the difficulty we face because we couldn't have the discussion about the needs analysis before the discussion about the Crows proposal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. Is that correct, Councillor Sims? Can I just get you to check that that's what you're an inclusion trying to get to? The options. There's, there are actually specific options, not just relevant options, it's the options, because there are specific options presented. Options there are four. And additional relevant questions. Yeah. 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 Or additional questions yeah. relating to the needs analysis. Yes. So, uh, Councillor Donovan, can you tell me if you're happy to accept the variation to your amendment? Yeah. Councillor Kouros, as the seconder. Thank you, Councillor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, what I understand that to mean, just so that we're very clear, so there is no confusion around um, interpretations after the meeting, 
Um, what I understand that to mean is that that will include the options that are within the need, needs analysis, and that is asking the community whether they support retained council ownership of the aquatic centre, the ownership of the aquatic centre by the state government, shared regional ownership of the new facility with other local councils, ownership of the aquatic centre by a private operator or a sports club. So that would give the opportunity, Lord Mayor, to canvas the range of options available to um, residents and ratepayers in the city of Adelaide, along with um, the proposal from uh, the quote, the Crows. It would be a uh, much more informed um, discussion than what was uh, initially proposed. And indeed, the reason why I wanted us to have the discussion about the needs analysis was so that we could tease out some of these issues. But if the relevant options from the needs analysis are included alongside the consultation, um, with that threshold question, um, then Lord Mayor, I'm happy with this amendment. Uh, Councillor Albiad. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I was initially going to support this. I'm not going to support it now uh, with the changes that are made. Uh, and the reason being is because there is an actual detailed separate piece which talks about the needs analysis that talks exactly to that and doesn't muddle the two together. One talks about the Crow's concept one talks about the need analysis. And the reason it's separate and it shouldn't be confused as together with that is because if the crows doesn't go ahead, where's well, a big chance it may not, the need analysis consultation still stands separately. And that need analysis informs us as a council to what is the next steps with regards to a facility that's falling apart. I think what's been introduced now in here completely muddies the water. Not to mention um, on Councillor Helen um, Donovan's approach, the CEO already noted that this is an open style consultation which will allow anyone to present anything to council in the way of ideas, concerns, concepts, etc. So I will urge councillors to not support the uh, changes that have been made um, and I'll be asking uh, councillors to stick to the original recommendation uh, that was moved um, previously and seconded. So I would not be supporting uh, this um, change, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. And, and um, I must say that I find uh, the former uh, Deputy Lord Mayor's um, behaviour tonight just confusing because uh, he denounced the, uh, the threshold question at one point. He then endorsed the threshold question of whether we want privatisation of the parklands. And now he doesn't want that question if it includes a question about the options from the needs analysis, which is a separate document, and which he claims already asked that question. Well, of course, like many things that the uh, the councillor offers to this chamber, it is grossly disingenuous because the proposal, the proposal at 12.1, the one that you declined to hear first, Lord Mayor, makes no mention of the options, none whatever. Uh, it is completely disingenuous for him to argue that that is the case. This motion, the motion that Councillor Donovan has put forward is a genuine attempt at consultation. I'm happy to support this. It actually goes out to the community and it says, do you support the threshold question, which Councillor Abbey had put, but seems to be unable to support. Uh, and then it asks on the basis of the needs analysis, which provides four very clear options, which one of those do you like? Now that's pretty democratic. I'm, I'm just delighted surprised and delighted that this chamber has come to this point. Um, I ask that everyone supports this uh, and I'll be looking for the hands in the air. Members, if not, I'll go. But did you wish to speak, Councillor Kouros, before I go back to Councillor <coughs> Donovan? Um, sorry, I'm uh, uh, Councillor Donovan and I, uh, uh, as, as the Secretary, are a little bit confused in regards to this. What, we're, um, uh, what we have intention is that we want the matters to be consulted separately. So uh, is this saying that this is going to be consulted together, like the needs analysis yeah. is going to be consulted and then the quality of the AFC proposals are also consulted there. Is the way that this is worded means that they'll be consulted as together? As a, yeah. 
I'm getting nods, so I'm assuming that the interpretation of that motion and that they would be consulted together. Yep, through Lord Mayor, that's the way I would read it. So we would join the two consultation processes together. Great. Could we have commitment from you, CEO, that the way that it was... Count, sorry, um, sorry, Councillor Donovan. Can I have a, ask a question? You may. Yep, a question. Thank you. Lovely. Please stand. Uh, could we have a commitment that in the way that it's presented, I think we all need to acknowledge we're not going to do two separate consultations. People will get um, confused about that process. So in the way that it's worded, we will be clearly uh, delineating that the needs analysis is a useful piece of work in and of itself, as uh, Councillor Abbey had mentioned. Uh, but of course, by necessity, this, this piece of work is all around the redevelopment of the aquatic centre. So of course, we're going to do the one consultation in the sense of we're not going to have two separate pieces of work, two separate consultations running in parallel. Uh, we wouldn't expect that when people come to your say, they're going to sign up twice and go through that whole process twice. But we can, within the wording of the question, ensure that we are looking to hear some information that we're seeking in terms of the um, in terms of the needs analysis and the questions that are intended as part of the Excellent. proposal on the development. Thank you, Councillor. I will get the CEO to respond to that. Through you, Lord Mayor. Look, your intent is clear. We understand that you're looking to join the two together to make it as practical an engagement process as possible. We will be able to do that if that's a desirable process. Whilst keeping the content as clearly um, identified as two pieces of two questions related to the same topic. Councillor, sorry, that's I correct. need you to use your microphone. Yep, through you, Lord Mayor, that's correct. We, we understand that. Satisfying? Um, yes. Uh, sorry, I've got Councillor Knoll. So, just so that I have it clear, because it's been rambling its way wherever. Um, in this is that, I mean, so this is very obviously specifically around the, the Crow's proposal and, and uh, you know, how we can fold that out in that consultation. And in the other component, which is in the needs analysis, that is looking at it, and for me, the way I see it is looking at it from a different angle. That is that, here's, the, here's what we need. Um, and then in that conversation is also what options have we got? Because again, I mean, if we're going to have an open conversation, it is about this is an option. Like in any any opportunity for any proposal, you look at every option that you can. So this is specifically around one. I mean, uh, and let's face it, the, uh, as imperfect as our uh, you know, unsolicited proposal uh, process is, and sadly got, got us to a point here, but it's also while we're having that conversation and because we, this is, it is out at our, you know, have, we organised it this way through, you know, the previous uh, councils with the way they'd structured their uh, unsolicited process, um, that we can still have, you know, the options done uh, across what other ways we can actually deliver a, a call um, you know, and the services so that we can have a genuine conversation around how this is going to unfold for the best uh, in outcomes for, for the ratepayers in the first instance and the, and the community at large in the second. Would you like to respond to that, CEO? Very well, that's how I understand the process to work. Uh, so members, if there's, uh, sorry, Councillor Cross, you've already spoken. No, but I just second I can Oh, you asked a question. Sorry. Yeah, yes, you asked the question before. Um, I um, don't support this. Sorry. Um, I just. Uh, I would like. I would like the consultation to be separate. Um, we have spent. Oh, sorry, um, councillor. Just a moment. Okay. Sorry. My I don't. I don't understand this logic because um, in doing it combined, I am quite happy to go out and consult on the proposal in regards to the crows. I'm not a fan of the crows, um, so you know I don't really care what they do. I, don't, I know that Anne Rand has sympathy for them in regards to um, uh, it, what, what they would like that, that they didn't have time to present. But let's just go out with what we've got. Let's show the public what what they have proposed, and let's consult on that. We have got a needs analysis report. We have spent the last 15 years talking about this aquatic centre. We have spent a considerable amount of money over time. We've had uh, motions in regards to it to, to keep it going. We need to know what the public would like to see in that centre. The needs analysis report gives four different options. This is the one that I am really, really looking forward to, to seeing what the public would like to see for the aquatic centre. I don't want the two combined. 
It doesn't make sense to do that. The, the, the unsolicited bid proposal is over here, whatever. Let's consult on that. Let's see what the public want. Do they like it? Do they want privatisation? Yes, let's have that say. And let's over here, let's talk, have real conversations about the aquatic centre. Let's not mix them. I don't, I don't see that. So I'm enjoying my second and I'm not supporting this amendment. You don't need to withdraw your second. You oh, just yes. need to okay. vote when you get that. So, Councillor Martin, Briefly. I'm assuming that is a question. It is. Uh, Lord Mayor, sorry, point of order. The mover did, the seconder did withdraw their, uh, their seconding, which means there is no seconder to the motion now, and you would need to seek another seconder. She did do that on record. Sorry, through the chair, given the conversation has gone so far, that it is too late to withdraw her seconding. She needs to just vote against the amendment as it is. The conversation has just continued too far at this point. So, Councillor Martin, you had a question. Yes, I'm getting more confused as the moments go by. But uh, my question is um, uh, of the administration, if there are two consultations, does that mean there's double the cost? So, you know, there are two advertisements in the newspaper, there are two lots of flyers and posters, um, it is double the cost. And, and what does the administration estimate the cost of a consultation is, uh, albeit on the same subject separately? CEO? Through you, Lord Mayor, the intent would be, was as proposed in the agenda, the intent would have been to undertake a concurrent but parallel process um, separate. That was the intent. The actual cost of the process, Tom, can you help us out with that? Through you, President Member, the actual cost is a couple of thousand dollars to actually undertake that extensive consultation. It's not a huge sum. Um, it, it entails the printing of separate posters. It also, the USA website would be set up specifically to address those questions. Um, so it's just a normal consultation process. The only difference in this consultation process is it's not our normal 21 days. We're actually going out for a 10 week process. So it's extensive and actually uh, approaches all the community. Uh, and so does that mean that, that there is less opportunity for publicizing each of them? I mean, obviously, if you have a poster place and you're going to two posters instead of one, that means there's, yeah, okay. I'm getting the idea. It's very good. Sorry. Did you wish to answer that question? Uh, through you, presiding member. Uh, posters uh, are an inexpensive process. What I would say on your say website, once it's set up, is inexpensive to set up. Um, what we are doing is responding to the motion that was actually put before us to actually respond and go out to, to two separate consultations, respond to, first of all, the needs analysis and also a draft concept submission in regards to that Adelaide Football Club. And can the administration give an assurance that they will say on the your say website, um, this question is not about the Crows facility, it's about the needs analysis. And on the other page, this is about the needs analysis, not about the Crows. Because I think people will be confused. Through you, Presiding Member, we can certainly clearly indicate in regards to the needs analysis, which is talking to the future intent of the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. And we can certainly clearly state in regards to the draft concept submission from the Adelaide Football Club. Thank you. Um, members, I'll go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up on the amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think tonight we've come to the point that there's clarity that we need to answer this threshold question as part of the consultation process. We have uh, confirmed with the CEO that we can ensure that the questions that we were asking um, are clearly defined in terms of what they're relating to the only reason we did the needs analysis in reality is because it was stimulated by the uh, process that was commenced with the unsolicited bid. It was, there was no intention for that to take place otherwise. So the two are of course linked in the sense that um, one has led to the other and they are both important pieces of information that we require. CEO has said that we can ensure that the way when we go to consultation that they are kept separate from a practical perspective, anyone who's figured out, you'll say, 
knows that no one's, it is very unlikely that people are going to go in twice and sign up twice and log in twice and go through all of those processes. It is somewhat time consuming to do. Um, so let's simplify it somewhat, but ensure that it's clear that we're relating to two uh, related but separate consultation pieces of work. This uh, amendment simply clarifies that we are asking a question that gives us that quantitative re response that allows the community to give the feedback to say X number of people, X percentage of those who responded, think clearly yes or no, read the pros redevelopment, which is critical as it stands at the moment in the indicative questions. They are the qualitative questions. Yes, allow anyone to give any information whatsoever, but it is not going to give us the kind of clarity that a, a question such as this would allow us to have. So I urge members to support the amendment. We can achieve what's been uh, requested in terms of ensuring that the questions are kept separate, but it's clear that they are um, in some ways related. Uh, and with this information, we're going to have a better sense of what the community wants before we proceed. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, members, those in favour of the amendment? Those against? Yeah, That's carried. Uh, no, that fails. Councillor, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Expose yourselves. Yeah. So, members, that takes us back to the substantive. Well, hang on, can you just explain where we are? We are on 12.2. We've gone back to the substantive. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? I'll just add a little bit towards this, and I was just waiting for all this to unfold. And look, if we look back a little bit at the history of this, I mean, in February we, we started a process, a, pro a process that was uh, organised, was arranged by previous council uh, as an away for someone to deliver uh, you know, an opportunity and be able to uh, present it in a, in, a, in a manner. It's not a perfect, uh, it was shown to be imperfect in every sense. But we can't deal with that now because people did that in good faith and we have to follow through with that process and we can clean this up at a later date so that it won't, you know, as in all new innovations, that we can do something a bit different and certainly use the learnings from this time so that we can do a better job next time and, and, and give more clarity to the people providing the, you know, uh, the look, looking for the opportunity. I mean, if we look at this period as well, uh, it has also hamstrung us. Because those of us who have said, okay, we don't have anything yet, I'm not going to talk about it until we actually do something that we can bring forward. Because in this chamber, we're supposed to come with a clear mind and then so that we can have our debate and come to a conclusion at the end. What has happened in the meantime is that those who, are, uh, those who have a very, very strong opinion and desire, very specific without any, any sort of uh, uh, you know, substance of fact, have come along and made uh, you know, so many accusations and stories and, and, and exaggerations that really have no no basis. In fact, we are starting to get facts, and that's important because now we can start to generally uh, discuss it. As and I've had a, a number of people, obviously very upset, and certainly uh, uh, you know, and I'm not able to appease those sort of things because I had nothing to actually uh, talk to them about for which I can now start to do. And I think we've got to be really uh, careful here because we have a needs analysis and that's coming up, and that helps to inform how we're going to do things. That'll enable us to say. And besides this opportunity, because don't forget, we, we allow uh, businesses to support our local communities. We've done it with so many of our, whether it's the pageant, uh, you know, whether it's Carol's Book Candlelight. There are so many things that businesses do, uh, do deliver and with us, and, and we, we can't uh, uh, set that aside without first going through the, you know, uh, looking at the value that it delivers for our community. And, you know, so let's put that to one side because they are, if they don't deliver this and what, we're expect, what we expect from them, then obviously we won't support it. So, and what, what this whole process will do and looking at the needs analysis separately and sadly, we, this was supposed to be done differently, but it was come to a head because we have, we've had so much inaccurate uh, you know, argument and stories put forward that you know, we haven't had a choice to do it any other way. 
And I think it's important now that we allow ourselves an open conversation, let all the people uh, uh, argue uh, and present their ideas and their, what their desires are, because there could be completely different options brought forward, which that needs analysis can also bring out, and those sort of discussions. And then we can really start to uh, look at what is it our community wants, and then what is it we can deliver, and how to best do that. And it may be uh, you know, something provided by, uh, by a club, uh, but it may also be that we have other, other options that you explore in this conversation uh, that we can do better with. One more moment. You know, and uh, it may be a combination of all of those things, because if we really want to have a Rolls Royce, uh, we also need to be able to afford it. And I mean, again, as and this has been brought up, I mean, 80% of the money that we are, that is generated is not generated by the community; it's generated by business. It relies on the community. It relies on, on the greater, uh, you know, people of Adelaide to view the city as as their core place. And I think uh, that enables us to do that. But don't forget, business is, is providing already the majority of what we are spending here. And it, but it needs the community, and it, obviously it's a partnership. And let us think uh, like that, because how you do that, I mean, we are here to uh, come out with a positive outcome for everybody and a great facility. I have, we want to deliver that, but it will come out at the end. Thank you. Uh, members. Yes, Councillor Donovan. Um, given the uh, the previous amendment failed, uh, but there seemed to be consensus around the intent of having a yes no question um, in terms of whether the public supports the inclusion of the Crows headquarters, uh, excluding not a threshold question, but the general question, um, could we get commitment from the CEO that that is included within the consultation, that there is uh, a question, a yes no question, as to whether the public supports the inclusion of the Crows headquarters as part of the Aquatic Centre redevelopment within the consultation? Three, Lord Mayor, it's not specifically provided for at the moment, and it's not been a directive of council. We have provided the opportunity for any members of the public to provide any comment that they wish. That's that's how it's proposed at the moment. Sorry, they don't that. So, members. I'll just look to the floor if anybody else wants to speak to the substantive. I'm going to speak before I ask Councillor Albia to say more. So, um, that's been a very lengthy discussion. Um, I, I will reiterate what I've been saying for months and months, and that is that no deal has been done. I'm going to go and print myself a t shirt by the end of this. Um, our number one guiding principle was that the community must have input into the decision making. And what this will allow us to do is to go out and consult with a proposal and also with our needs analysis. It is a draft proposal. It hasn't been informed by the needs analysis because they have only just received it tonight. So as a council, we don't have an endorsed position until we actually hear from the public, which is as it should be. So we are halfway through stage two. Um, we've yet to do detailed modelling. We've yet to look at the operations and the commercial and the feasibility studies. All of that would have been part of stage two had we not actually come in before now. The reason that we've come in early was quite clear. There was so much um, scaremongering and uh, fake news out there in terms of 17 storeys and um, cyclone fencing and barbed wire and everything else that was out there that there was a push from this council to try and get that consultation out as soon as humanly possible and that we would take advantage of the highest visitation period of the aquatic centre which is the summer period and take it out further for another four to six weeks after that for a 10-week consultation. Um, so it is targeted. Um, we actually can uh, feed into that ourselves as well, online face-to-face -face surveys, um, and it's not a push poll. So um, in the meantime, um, we will actually do some further work on the needs analysis as we need to as a council, and um, I look forward to seeing where we go next. Um, so I'll go to Councillor Abia to sum up. Thank you, Board Mayor. Look, obviously I'd ask members to support this. Um, the only difference between what's been proposed today and what has been proposed in the past 
uh, with regards to other council members is there is actually something to consult on. I know the intent of Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin and that of Councillor Moran all along has been we need to be able to consult whether the public wants to see a private club on the parklands, be it at the aquatic centre facility or not. That's what they want to consult on, and we've heard that very, very loud and clear. They are represented. Councillor Sims, please. Sorry. Those councillors um, represent the views of the community that is out there. There is definitely a voice in the community, and at which that is the voice that they that they represent here, and we are hearing it loud and clear from the community and from them. Please. Um, I dispute a lot of the figures that have been thrown around, and I can tell you, Lord Mayor, that at the last election, as a matter of fact, when Councillor Martin keeps talking about teams and factions. At the last election, democratically, the City of Adelaide elected a group of people to be on this chamber to make decisions. Now, at that meeting of APA, I remember very clearly, there's been members of APA that were sitting there, were having a laugh at myself. The team thing was having a discussion around. We were never taken seriously. The reality of the matter remains is we went out to the election, obviously with many people scaremongering around team, and the, the City of Adelaide elected us to be here to represent their views. Councillor, I need and you to talk to tonight, Councilor, I need you to talk to the motion tonight, before you. Their views tonight. Point of order, Lord Mayor, just to clarify, does the team exist? I can't keep up. Yeah, the team, the team Councillor, exists, if I Councilor, ask you to talk to the um, motion, please. It's very clear. Um, it's the members of who Councillor Martin decides to be in and out, but the difference between what we do as a group of council is that we are working together collaboratively today on receiving the information and dealing with the information accordingly, where some other members are operating in silos and operating in their own points of view. Councillor, we are to talking see. to the motion before I am, us. I am, Councillor. I am, Lord Mayor. I am. I think the most important thing to know <laughs> is I don't respond to scare tactics <laughs> with regards to uh, elections, and they're entitled to do so. But, Lord Mayor, you've allowed them to respond to that, and I've got to respond to that point of view very importantly. Councillor Martin himself in 2014 paid me to use a database to Councillor, we are not talking. No, 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 no. I've got We're to note that on record. The motion. It's important to note on record. He did, he did pay to be part Councilor, of a database outside Councilor. the city. So he's comfortable at his own pace to do that. But when others are working together to deliver a good outcome for the city of Adelaide, Councillor Martin contests that. Uh, thank you. No, I, I don't, Lord Martin. Mayor. I just never no. got a receipt. I've got that. Councillor, I actually need you to speak to the motion. Um, very important, Lord Mayor. This factional stuff has got to stop. There's a majority clear council here that wants to see something moving forward with regards to this proposal. I would ask for an extension, please, Lord Mayor. Councillor, you can have an extension if you speak to the motion. I will speak to the motion. We are here now, and there is a majority of councillors that are sitting here that want to see this go ahead. We want to be able to go out to a community consultation and present the community an opportunity to be able to respond to council on the AFC proposal. All we're asking tonight is for us to have that opportunity to go out to the community and ask the question. Once that information comes back in, we will all have the opportunity to debate this again and move forward, hopefully, with the only thing in mind is not politics, but a community outcome. And that community outcome, I've made already clear before what I'd like to see, and I'm hoping that this is what will be presented to us as a result of this public consultation process. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerra, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, and Councillor Kunal. Thank you, members. Uh, we now go to item 12.1, which is the Aquatic Centre Needs Analysis Lord from Mayor. Mover. Sorry, I had um, Councillor Abiyad and a second to Councillor Sims. No, I have withdrawn oh. my second. He had his hand here first. He had his hand. So, Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, we've spoken. Um, to this at length, this is a separate piece of information that we will still need to do and a separate piece of work that we need to do as a council. Whether the AFC proposal goes ahead or not, um, it's irrelevant. This is the piece of relevance for us. 
And this is going to be uh, basically the information that we need to be able to dictate what potentially will happen on that site uh, and also the level of investment that we may need to consider and have if there isn't a third party interest um, in this site and in this specific development. As we all know, and we have known for a very long time, the um, aquatic facility itself is falling apart. We are experiencing significant challenges with it. And those challenges are having an impact on community services where we can improve those services and we've been able to. We have thrown good money after that over the last decade at least that I've been on council. I've seen that occur. Uh, and we're spending millions of dollars on the site to get it to where it needs to be or at least to maintain a standard that we can provide those services to the community. As we've heard tonight and we have heard last week, uh, it is eventually going to hit a bit of a brick wall and we need to be able to make a call on whether we are in the aquatic services industry business to provide that service for ratepayers um, and city visitors, or we're not. If we are, we need to understand the cost associated with the service we're going to provide. And if we're not, we also need to understand what the impact would look like on the community. The so this, um, this specific piece of work, which talks to a need analysis, I think is really important because that public consultation process will also give us the opportunity to understand what the community needs with regards to an aquatic facility and whether they want one at all. Uh, we don't know any of those answers. We've been in the business of the aquatic facility for quite some time. People may have changed their minds. People might want to see different style of services. They might want one pool, three pools, two pools. We have no idea. So this is our opportunity to gauge our rate players and understand the level of interest they'd like to see, what kind of service they want to have, but also most importantly, um, what kind of investment they want the City of Adelaide to make. Because we are talking about significant funds here. Uh, we've seen options on the uh, on the wall up to $60 million. Uh, so we need to understand in a long-term financial plan if there's a community interest to see a $60 million development in an aquatic facility. How will we fund that? Will we go at that alone? Do we need to work with the state government, federal government? Do we need to work with sporting institutions? We're not sure. And this document will educate us as a council. So I'd ask members to support this so we can consult on it. Thank you. Councillor Abrams. Uh, Welcome back. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I wish to move an amendment. Um, that is that part one remain as printed. That part two read as follows. Endorses the communication and engagement plan as shown in the attachment B to item 12.1 on the agenda for the meeting of the council held on the 10th of December 2019 for the purposes of commencing public consultation on the draft needs analysis with the following amendments. Add the words at least one public meeting. Sorry, just slow down a little bit, Councillor. Sorry, Lord Mayor. That's right. Add the words at least one public meeting at Town Hall under the heading how on page two. And the words at least Sorry, one. Just one, one moment, councillor. No, I'm just I'm just repeating it. Add the words at least one public meeting at town hall under the heading how on page two. Add the following questions on page two. Which of the following options from the needs analysis do you support? Which of the following options from the needs analysis do you support? A, retained council ownership of the existing aquatic centre with upgrades to the facility at a cost. Sorry, councillor. Retained council ownership of the existing aquatic centre with upgrades to the facility at a cost. B, ownership of the aquatic centre by the state government. C, shared regional ownership of a new facility with other local councils. D, ownership of the aquatic centre by private operator. E, ownership. Sorry, just, just a moment by private operator, or E, ownership of the aquatic centre by a sports club, and three to remain as printed. If I could get you to read that back and just make sure that we've captured that properly. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. I seek a second to Lord Mayor. Thank Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, what this is seeking to do is to give the community the opportunity to provide direct comment on the scenarios that are presented within the needs analysis. This is something, Lord Mayor, that they've never been given the opportunity to do. And I don't think it's enough for us to simply put the needs analysis out as a general document and invite general feedback. I'd actually like the community to be able to work through the scenarios that are available to them. To ask the, uh, to um, address the question of whether or not they want to keep the aquatic centre in public hands and pay a bit more for us to do that. To look at the question of whether we should partner with um, and, uh, uh, other councils to make this happen, whether we should work with the state government, or whether indeed we should entertain a bid from a private operator or um, a sports club. This, Lord Mayor, is a more fulsome consultation, and I really encourage members to support it. I can see a few rolling their eyes, but this has actually come directly from the needs analysis. These aren't options I've made up with, made up, Lord Mayor. We've paid a lot of money to uh, get an expert to provide options for consideration by this council. Let's put them out to the community and hear what they have to say. Now, Lord Mayor, last time I put a motion forward on the parklands, I, I was advised by the um, then Deputy Lord Mayor that he would oppose everything I put forward um, on the parklands. Irrespective of what the matter was, um, he would automatically oppose it. Um, a position which I believe to be in potential contradiction of uh, the higher principles contained in Council's Code of Conduct, that is considering all relevant information and opinions, giving each due weight in line with the Council's community consultation obligations. Lord Mayor, I'd urge all members of Council to think very carefully before they adopt the knee-jerk opposition that I saw from the then Deputy Lord Mayor, now Councillor Abiyak. Now, I know tonight he has made the admission that he is part of a faction that has a majority control of this council. That's the first I've heard that said in this chamber, Lord Mayor. But I Councillor, urge, are you talking to them? I am, Lord Mayor. I'm making my case. Mm -hmm. I urge members of that faction to consider this proposal on its merits and to think very carefully about whether they can justify saying no to presenting these scenarios to the community. Councillor Moran. Councillor Kerra. Just a simple question, Lord Mayor. How about F, allowing a grandstand? Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Councillor Abiyad. Um, I didn't want to interrupt Councillor Sims, but that's not what I said to him. Um, that's OK. Um, Councillor Martin, I don't believe you, ever. Um, Lord Mayor, just you just did the same me. thing, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't believe you, ever. ever. Right. Councillor uh, Abia, can we talk um, to the CEO, um, um, amendment, please? The intent of the consultation, I don't specifically have, uh, have a problem with this, because that's what the consultation was going to do anyway. Uh, but I want to ask a question uh, with regards to this. Uh, how detailed were we going to go on the needs analysis and how educated will the document be for, um, for example, for the ratepayers to be able to make a tick in a box with regards to any of those specific options? Is it the intent that it's broad or is the intent that we are looking at um, spending 30 million or 60 million? Is there a, like a measure? What's how we how we plan to consult? Because that's always been a function of the admin, not a function of the electric Okay, board. thank you, CEO. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'll ask Tom to respond to that. For you, Lord Member, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, the the questions are listed within the consultation. So the first important thing that we need to know is what level of services need to be provided. That's the basis of the needs analysis. We don't even talk to facilities at that stage. So we need to know what sort of services the community would wish to see in a modern contemporary recreational and aquatic centre. Next thing after that is in regards to scalability of the centre regard, and that comes down to cost as well. So we put a number of scenarios there. They are scenarios. They can be tweaked up, tweaked down, depending on scale, depending on services. But the questions that we've got in front of us give us uh, enough information to come back to council. We can further engage should there be a formal submission from either the unsolicited bid proponent or if council wishes to consider this on its own in, uh, in regards to proposing or moving forward with the aquatic centre. 
I think the important bit is that the questions that are there are fine because they are clearly listed within the report. But what I would uh, just encourage Council to look at is don't lose sight of services, not just options or management options. Yeah. Don't lose sight of the services provided because at the end of the day, it's not only about ownership, it's actually getting the centre right moving into the future. And, and for me, um, thank you um, through you, CEO, for the answer. Uh, for me, the main um, issue that I've got with this is you're politicising um, a, um, a public consultation process on a box ticking approach versus trying to understand the services that the community needs. Uh, and that's the concern that I've got with that level of questioning, Councillor Sims, uh, because you are trying to, in this consultation form, to politicise an issue without a depth of information that is feeding into it. A tick box approach of whether you want a private club or not doesn't indicate uh, whether someone may want to support a sports club because it has X, Y and Z benefit. Um, the discussion when it comes to the state government, I don't even know why you're wasting your time uh, with regards to that because we all know the answer to that uh, and we've heard it in the past. Uh, with regards to the retention of council's ownership of existing aquatic facilities, that would also be educated as a result of the level of services that people want to expect from council. What we're asking there, if the question is going to be coming back as yes, we want you to retain it. And if the answer to that retaining bit would be we want a $60 million solution, we don't we don't necessarily have the money to be able to deliver on some of those outcomes. So the most important thing is for us to understand the level of services that the community wants from us first uh, before we engage with a yes, no approach to a political outcome that the councillor Sims is trying to look for. Uh, that is still a outcome that we can have a debate about in the community as elected members. And these are things that I would imagine those councillors will still engage uh, the constituents with regards to some of those questions and their concerns. But from an administrative perspective, I think it's very important that the administration gets a very clear answer from our ratepayers, constituents and South Australians to the regards to the level of service without diminishing that part of the consultation process. So I've, I have reservations and I'm happy to listen to the debate with regards to those questions. Um, and I would prefer it that it's more focused on the service delivery than it is on political outcomes. Thank you. I'll have the Deputy Lord Mayor then Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I can't support this amendment. Um, it seems to conflate much of what we're doing here, much of what we're trying to achieve. There's there's three main elements is he, that, that are here. There's what we need, there's what we want, and then there's, there's what we can afford. Um, now, the needs analysis, the needs analysis, and the reason we're providing that to the community is informing us as, as to what the demand is. The reason we're consulting on it is so that the community, community can tell us what exactly they want. So this, this actually seeks to, if we want to talk about manufactured consent in this chamber, this seeks to manufacture consent. This puts it, this offers it up on a silver platter and tells the public what they should be thinking. No, it doesn't. It's structured in such a way and it's politicising the issue, issue in such a way that it manufactures consent. So I think it's a bit rich to come into this chamber and talk about community consultation when you're trying to outline exactly to them how and what they should be thinking about. We're talking about service delivery. We're talking about the aquatic centre. You can have the political arguments in your own time. We want to know from the public what they want us to deliver for them. This is manufactured consent, and I would not expect any less um, from Councillor Sims, because he's sought time and time again through, through many motions to manufacture consent. First, it was the threshold question, manufacturing consent before we had detailed designs. Sure. Now we've got detailed designs and we don't want to consult on them at all. Then we want to in include the threshold question again, manufacturing consent. Now we want to actually design the consultation process with all these various facets to it, manufacturing consent. Telling the public what they should be saying to us is not how democracy works. That's not how this process works. And I'd urge members to vote this amendment down. I have uh, Councillor Moran. 
I have never heard such factional speak as I have in this council tonight. It is ridiculous. First, Hassan gets upset about being called a faction, then declares he is a faction, Councillor which we Abiyad. all, of course, know that he is, and he and you are the head of it. But I've never seen them twist themselves into little tight balls to try and not vote for something that non-team members put up. Councillor Abiyad said clearly in this chamber, in a fit of anger, that he would never, ever vote for anything that Councillor Sims said regarding the parklands and this issue. This is a very sensible addition. It is not push polling. It is just focusing on the main areas of concern to tease out what the ratepayers, be they business ratepayers. I never quite understand why that's such a big distinction, why Team Adelaide constantly says 80% of the rates are paid by business. We know businesses pay a lot of rates. Nobody's arguing that. But they also don't have particularly different views from the residential ratepayers. The businesses, they too, cherish and um, value the parklands around their businesses. They're no different. So I really don't quite understand why Team Adelaide um, holds that up as their banner. I think they think that the businesses vote for them, which I... <laughs> uh, anyway, these questions are very sensible questions. They're not push polling, but they do come to the nub of the matter that Team Adelaide is terrified about. They do not want a yes or no answer. They are very afraid that when the question goes out to the public, do you want private, a public commercial activity in the parklands? Do you want to hand over our parklands, which is only valuable to the Crows because it's free? They could go and buy land somewhere else, but no, the parklands are much nicer because they don't cost anything. All they have to do is build us a shoddy little aquatic centre tacked onto their administrative quarters, and they've got free, beautiful parklands. But what Team Adelaide really doesn't want to find out is what the people, what the ratepayers, business or otherwise, what they don't want a yes or no answer because they can't argue about that. If it's the needs and the and the bibs and bobs and what might we might look for and the uh, operators, um, then it's all blurry. So you can make it up as you go along. But if you ask a simple question, do you want us to go down this route? Yes or no, which should have been asked some six months ago. Um, then they can't argue with it. <coughs> Hassan can't kick up a lot of dust. France can't say whatever the hell France says all the time. Uh, they cannot confuse the issue. That it is a yes or no answer. And that is what they're terrified of. They don't want to hear. Uh, the APA did a very uh, good consultation using a very professional, rather businessy firm, I hear, that wouldn't, weren't greenies, weren't tree huggers. They are a professional national firm. And they came back 76 do not want the ownership of the Aquatic Centre to go to the Crows. That is what Team Adelaide's frightened of, and that's why they're frightened of these questions. Councillor Kerr, oh, oh, sorry, I have Councillor Kouros first. Councillor Kerr, sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I actually support this amendment. I um, actually always said that I am very excited about the needs analysis report and that is what I want uh, to have accurate um, uh, consultation with the public about. This has been going on for 15 years, this talk about the aquatic centre. We need to make decisions in regards to it. From 2003, this actually, last we were given the summary of council decisions for the past 15 years on this aquatic centre. And back in 2003, the council declined an offer from the Recreation of Sports to submit a proposal to develop the facility into a state aquatic centre. Missed opportunity there. Um, it continues the amount of motions that came into this uh, in this report of the band-aid fixes over the years with this aquatic centre. I mean, I mean, how much more can we can we keep on going here? I'm just going back. Let's keep going. 2009 year, we, we we looked at gifting the centre to the government. We, were, we wanted to give it away to them. That was another motion that was carried that council agreed on, but of course that never happened because the government are not going to take on a facility like that, are they? And then there's even questions on those in regards to the aquatic centre. Um, and let me get to which one here that was 
quite interesting. Councillor, we are talking to the motion before well, us. Well, this is Even. actually to the motion because we haven't had clear transparency in regards to the aquatic centre. We need to get clear tra transparency from the community in regards to what they want for the centre. It is in regards to the motion. It has never been clear to the public what was happening in this chamber with the councillors and what their intention was with the centre. It only has been band-aid fixes. And on top of that, back in 2017, Councillor Moran had said quite publicly in the paper and uh, on radio, because there's a question people notice, I presume that it's from Councillor Martin, because this is a conspiracy theory guy, um, that um, in the, the council will be, that Council Moran is quite the same. The council will be more than happy if the Crows had taken over the aquatic centre and used the gym and ran as a public aquatic centre at the same time. So that was a question I noticed. So, so much information has been provided to us. Let's just, let's just move on. Let's just go to the public. Let's just ask them these questions. Let's see what they want. Let's work out solutions. Let's work together. Stop being political. And I've, all, I've really well, gone on about you being childish, and this just goes beyond it all. Let's take these ratepayers seriously and let's go out there and consult on the matter and not throw out derogatory comments, patronising comments, whatever you want to call it. These are real issues for real Thank people. Thank you, Councillor Carroll Cross. Uh, Councillor Kira, now I'm going to allow you to speak even though technically you did actually speak before with your flyaway comments, so uh, well, um, it wasn't on quite your a question. Lord Mayor, I'll keep it brief. I think that is in the spirit of uh, debate in the Chamber, and I, I thank you for that indulgence, Lord Mayor, so I'll keep it brief. Um, in response to Councillor Moran suggesting that, uh, that uh, those who uh, uh, oppose the decision of Councillor Moran are terrified of something. I'm not terrified of anything. I am not terrified of anything or anyone. I'm happy to say it here and now. I am not terrified of anything. What I am concerned and worried about is uh, the abuse of uh, uh, the abuse of a democratic system. We are not operating. Uh, we, we do not operate. We are not Switzerland. We do not operate on a de facto referendum basis. And what I've seen, uh, uh, you know, continually tonight, is an attempt to force this process into a into a de facto referendum basis of decision. That is not how we operate. And there is a very legitimate reason to oppose that. I would say this to the gallery to at least consider: there is no bad faith, Lord Mayor. There is no bad faith uh, in, in 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 being aware of the nature of actors activism as it operates today. When you have these uh, questions of this nature, when you have threshold questions put up, we know exactly what is going to happen, unfortunately and sadly today. Okay, you will get a, a an activist push to sway the result. So there is nothing wrong whatsoever in being aware of that. There is nothing wrong whatsoever in prevailing against the abuse of a system and the conversion of a system. Let's not forget, we were elected uh, through a democratic election. We were elected through a, a democratic process. We are not Switzerland. This is not a citizen-initiated referendum. This is a process that uh, that is democratically, is under the auspices uh, of, a, of a democratic process. So I am not terrified of anything uh, when I say that I oppose this amendment, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kerry. Councillor Canal. Um, I suppose that the problem I have with this uh, amendment specifically is that one, something that's within the body of uh, some advice that we've been given, some guidance, etc., it, it certainly it, it informs a, a, a set of questions. If, if we are trying to get genuine feedback first from the community, then let us talk about that. Let's talk about what their wants and, and what their needs are. And that then sets the basis from which you then go to these sorts of questions. By putting this up front, this is a bit like a referendum on which what what I would like to have as a, as, a, as an option for the management of the of the aquatic centre. The problem we have with that is, okay, council retains. We'd like to have the Taj Mahal, sixty million dollars plus ripping down the other sixty six million dollars, and that's a figure. Let's blow that out seventy seventy five million dollars because that's what happens. The difficulty I have now is that we've pigeonholed ourselves into a space. And we, you know, uh, and that doesn't allow us the ability to now go outside and say what are the ways we can deliver a service that the community wants. So by by murking it up with putting this as an opinion poll into uh, the you know the actual questions in the first instance means we're not going to ask the, the important stuff first. 
what is it we need, what is it you want, and then through that conversation, we talk to all the other stakeholders around the place, we get the, how we can deliver this, and out of that need and desire, we come along with the various options, then we can start to say, here's the options, here's the costs, here is the ways we can deliver. We get we we know about it. The, the community can actually see it because at the end of the day, it is about money, and it is about how we're going to deliver those things we want. I mean, let's say we all want a great social environment where we're looking after everybody in the community, but we, it, it does cost, and we need to actually figure those things in. And by setting the, the conversation and the, the consultation, so that we evolve our community, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, what people are desiring, what we can do with the conversations with all of our other stakeholders, we then get to a point where we can present the full argument. People can then say, well, you know, they, they can start to make their compromises within the abilities of or what we can deliver through the various mechanisms. And I think that's what's important. By doing this up front early, it's like the same, do you like the crows, don't you like the crows? That, again, we're hijacking what is needed to, uh, you know, from that is, we have to fix this pool. Simple, no matter what we do, we have to fix the pool. So let's talk about what it is that we accept, accept and expect, then it is how, and then put it out there, say, okay, this is how we're going to, do, this is how the options are for the delivery. We make the, the deliberation. We'll obviously, we, we'll have enough uh, uh, people as wanting to speak with us and communicating with us. You know, with the, we've already had a few hundred emails of people who are against this, but just on the basis, I don't like the pros to be part of this. It's not about that. It's about how we're going to deliver this for the best outcome. And that may or may not be, working with other councils may or may not be, it, it, you, you may end up with nothing. And isn't that sad? Because we, we, we've played such a silly game in terms of looking after the community. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Members, if not, I'll go back. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, I don't believe the city currently has the capital to fund these renovations. And let me say also that the potential to acquire a new aquatic centre with the same or expanded services at no cost while reducing parkland impact is a worthy proposition. Now, those aren't my words. They are actually Councillor Kouros's, um, who issued a flyer um, and who has also said tonight that she wants to go out to consultation while she's voted constantly at every opportunity Excuse against me, that. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, do I get to defend myself in regards to those comments that I councillors would like to make Councilor. political statements about and not have any real relevance to the conversation that we're having right now? If it's a point of order, I didn't hear you can. That. Can I have that a point of order, can I? So I'll correct. What, what? Can I correct what he's saying? If it is incorrect, you can actually state what your point of order is. Well, can I state what my intention was with those statements that I made, or do I have to do that separately on Facebook? Because it's really in the chamber. chamber. She, you can correct if you think what he's saying is incorrect. So you can correct what he's saying. Well, I can't not say that I didn't say it, but I'd like to explain why. Oh, man. Uh, you can't Fair do an explanation, you just have well, to... Well, if he wants to do this sort of game, so... so you know, thanks, Councillor, you've already spoken, but unless you're Council going to Ryan, correct uh, a, 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 a misstatement. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, may I ask that the clock is reset for that one? We have done that already. Thank you. Thank you very Martin. much. The point that I was trying to make is that there are disingenuous statements happening here tonight. People are kicking up dust. The, the issue for them is that they do not want to see serious open consultation. Now, the needs analysis sets out clearly some options. The proposed consultation sets out a series of questions. They are helped enormously by the amendment that's been proposed by Councillor Sims because they're very vague in the sense that they say, do you want club swimming? Do you want recreational swimming? And the nexus between those two and the proposals that Councillor Sims is suggesting that go out to consultation is that the proposals actually will determine whether they are recreational, whether they are professional. And moreover, we are somehow pretending that the ratepayers are such silly bunnies that they won't know that there is a needs analysis and that it contains a set of recommendations. We're kind of pretending that doesn't exist and we're not going to ask them. Well, look, the ratepayers of this city have every right 
to make a decision about the kind of investment they want to see in their community. And let me say, they've been making it for a long time, and I'm not going to go back and read motions uh, that have been considered by previous councils, but this council, this city has been involved in swimming facilities since 1860. 1860 at the city baths. And it went on until 1969 when the new centre was created. And throughout all of that time, the city has been contributing to the running of the facility. Now, there is no argument in this council when we talk, as Councillor Abbott has, about $30 million for Rundle Mall, for $19 million for Gawler Place, for $30 million for a new Victoria Square. But it's a big deal when we talk about $15 or $18 million to save a community facility. That is what this is all about. It is an ideological issue. It is about dividing the community into supporters of the business community and supporters of residents and others who visit the city. Now, Councillor Mount, would you like extra time? The, yes, I, I will. I don't Members? expect to get it. Thank you. So, members, extra time for Councillor Martin. What? The team's not supporting me, Lord Mayor. I'm devastated. Sorry, Councillor. That means Martin. I have to sit down. I'm that not allowed does. to. That does. Uh, Councillor Carroll, thank you. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Sorry, I haven't handed it back to you yet, Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims. Sorry, Councillor Sims, I was going to speak before I hand back to you. Thank you, Councillor Sims, oh, sorry, I'm going to speak I before I hand back to you. Summer. No, I hadn't yet. <laughs> huh. um, I actually think, again, once again, uh, we are actually, you know, as much as the discussion gets on and gets heated, we are so much more aligned than we are against each other. Everyone in this room wants to go to consultation. So this whole discussion has been about how we go to consultation. And we have a needs analysis in front of us. We actually need to take it out to the public. We need to know what level of services we want. We need to know what that scale is. We need to know what's important to the public and how they're going to prioritise those services in terms of how we're going to look at the aquatic centre going forward. On that basis, we each have the analysis or the um, uh, the consultation uh, that is attached, uh, which seems to actually go through all of that in terms of the services, the importance, and also it gives them plenty of option to actually answer any other question they want on the needs analysis, including giving us some behavioural information around who is actually coming and how often they attend. Um, so I think that if we can actually just all move forward in terms of the consultation, then we can get some great feedback from our public. And with that, I'll hand back to you, Councillor Sims, to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and thanks for your support, because I'm taking from that that you support my amendment. Um, look, Lord Mayor, um, oh, really? I'm surprised, Lord Mayor, I'm surprised. Look, uh, Lord Mayor, I've been very confused by um, the discussion tonight. To be honest, there are more positions than the Kama Sutra on the park lands of some on this council. I can't keep track of them. Sometimes they want consultation, then they don't want consultation. They say, let's talk about what we can do to save the aquatic centre, but when I suggest let's actually present the community with options, they say, oh no, that's manufacturing consent. I mean, I've never heard such nonsense. I've never heard such nonsense, and it is clearly, um, it's very clear to me, Lord Mayor, what this is all about. It is about limiting the field of the consultation. It's about putting one option to the community, the crows or nothing at all. That's how this is being presented. It's a false dichotomy, Lord Mayor. What we're seeing is we have a, a process structured around a proposal from the Crows. And then when we have an opportunity to actually ask some other questions of our community, some on this council say, no, we only want to ask the one question. It's the Crows or nothing at all. It's a false dichotomy and it is based on some on this council's desire to achieve a particular outcome. Now, Lord Mayor, the other reason why it's really important to ask about these other options is it's clear to me that there is broad community support for them. We've had an opinion poll that's been released this week, a representative poll of people in the city of Adelaide. Now, I know some councillors will say, oh, you know, 
that's a left-wing poll. Well, you know, Reachtel uh, provides polling for the Australian Lord Mayor. They're not exactly a socialist rag. Um, so, you know, I think this poll needs to be uh, considered. We need to recognise the views of the community here and give the community the opportunity to respond directly to the issues within the needs analysis. And Lord Mayor, let's look at the needs analysis and what we're putting out for consultation if my amendment is not supported. We're going to be asking the community, please indicate your age, indicate your postcode, your residence, how often you go to the centre, how you got here, what are some of the things you use, what are some of the things you'd like to see. We don't ask the community how you'd like to maintain uh, these facilities. We don't ask the community whether they're willing to pay a little bit more to ensure that we have a publicly owned aquatic centre. And I'm proposing we ask the community that question. Do you want to retain ownership of the existing aquatic centre with upgrades to the facility at cost? These are important questions, Lord Mayor, and we should be asking them of our community rather than having a limited consultation that is focused on one proposal. And to respond directly to the constant criticism that is made of me on this council, you're being political. Well, Lord Mayor, I, and I ask for a, a second uh, more, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you. Uh, the, in response to the constant refrain, you know, you're being political. Well, Lord Mayor, these are political issues. We're a city council. We're talking about the use of public space. So guilty as charged. Yes, I am being political. I'm an elected official and I'm here to represent my community and everyone on this council got here through an election process and they're part of the political process. And Lord Mayor, if some members of this council don't enjoy the political process, I encourage them to put their energies elsewhere. Yeah. Members, we will go to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? Division. He's lost. Yep. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us back to the original motion. Uh, I will go to the chamber. If not, these are changing times. Last week, someone in the Lord Mayor's Christmas lunch mentioned the word menopause, and tonight we're talking about Kama Sutra. I'm going to go to Councillor Abia to sum up. Thank you. Lord Mayor, in summing up and just taking some of your words, um, this is a consultation process um, around the Aquatic Centre, around the services of the Aquatic Centre. That is the intention. That's going to go out. It's going to come back to Council, hopefully better informing us to be able to make a decision on how we best see fit to fund, assist, provide those level of services to the community. Um, and I think that's a really important takeaway from this. The other thing that is a real issue for me is I'd ask elected members to not be completely firm in their current opinions, um, in the sense that there is, um, with you, Councillor Sims, and some of the other councillors, you've already made up your mind on what you don't want to see there whatsoever. Um, so it doesn't matter what questions you will include in there. Uh, at the end of the day, I'd ask you that whatever comes back from the community, that you are all open-minded to be able to take on board the community's feedback, your rate payers that have elected you, and potentially change your mind if there's an opportunity where you see that the community will be at heart of making our decisions. So I'd ask members to please support this consultation process, and hopefully you'll be better um, informing all of us as councillors on how we will move ahead with an aquatic facility in our city. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? I would really like to call a division right now, but <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank you. Um, members, we will go now to um, thank you. Um, the motion on notice by the Deputy Lord Mayor about the Parklands Dry Zone, Lord which Mayor, is 15.3. Just, just in the interest of good decision making, should we have a break? I was going to do this and then take a break. Okay. So that the members of the gallery uh, may leave should they wish. Certainly. Um, so, uh, are you moving? One. Yes, uh, I would like to move as printed and I second it. Councillor Moran has seconded you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, excellent, thank you. Um, 
Uh, well, we've seen, or we heard rather, the deputations um, just earlier about the effect uh, that problem drinking in Adelaide's parklands is having on our residents and all the rest of it. But if we could just indulge a little bit of history here. 2002 was when this council decided to make all the city streets and parks a 24-hour dry zone. It was when Michael Harbinson was Lord Mayor. Uh, and uh, 2014 is when we brought in, brought in the current dry zone that we have now in the parklands, part of the parklands, and for a part time. Now, both of those um, dry zones were brought about because of problem drinking, um, not exclusively, but largely um, to do with Indigenous people. Now, at no point in history have we also sought to address the root cause of the problem. We've always been putting a Band-Aid on it. And I refer to the dry zone, which was very controversial when it was brought in. Um, I refer to that dry zone and that, once again, there was, no, there was no response put in by either level of government, local or state or federal for that matter, that actually dealt with any issues relating to the root cause of the problem, which is that we need to be able to, to support vulnerable people in our community generally and vulnerable Indigenous people specifically as well. And there are many complex issues um, that surround that. And that is what we're seeking to do today, or that is why I'm seeking Council's endorsement to do today. This is why um, in November I had Council specifically carve out funding out of the homeless, homelessness funding that I secured earlier in the year, specifically carve out funding to give to the Adelaide Zero Project, which is nation leading in its work, um, not just around homelessness, but Aboriginal mobility as well, to carve out that funding to implement a solution because we have seriously been lacking political leadership in this space. That is what all the social service providers are saying. That is what the community are now saying. The dry zone is only a band-aid fix just to, just to stop the noisy residents, the ones that email us, the ones that make complaints. No one's actually moved um, to help and to think about the vulnerable Australians, particularly Indigenous Australians, who we, we seem to just gloss over that. We seem to gloss over it. We move them on. Um, certainly this issue that we've got at the moment where we're seeing people come down from as far away as the Northern Territory is because they've been moved on, in a sense. As alcohol has become so difficult um, uh, to consume and to have on country in the Northern Territory and elsewhere in Central Australia and places like Sejunia, um, we're seeing people come to Adelaide to drink. We're seeing um, even our own regulations around liquor licensing and the bottle shops we have in the CBD who have special rules in place, put in place by the commissioner. Those rules are being flouted. We see grog runners come from out in the suburbs into the city to sell liquor to Indigenous people at double the cost, if not more sometimes. It, it, they're actually taking advantage of people who have serious um, uh, substance abuse issues, being alcohol is the main one. Um, and so, Lord Mayor, that's why we carved out that funding earlier in the year, not so long ago, so we could actually put a place of solution for our leadership in a second you know, so. That's why part four is in this as well. This time, we're not just seeking um, to put a band-aid over it. We're not just seeking to move people on. We're actually seeking to start to solve the issue. That's something that hasn't happened before. I commend it to the Chamber and I seek your support. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I often forget that, um, that history does get forgotten so quickly. Um, uh, I support this and it's a, it's a laudable and worthy, but for the mover to suggest that um, the dry zone has been brought in just as a band-aid and no previous um, uh, bodies or councils have uh, try have attempted to uh, to alleviate the base problems. Of course, they're very difficult to. When we first brought in the dry zone, uh, my his recollection of history is a little bit more accurate because it was actually there. I don't think uh, Councillor Hyde was born when uh, I came on council, which is terrible, isn't it? But um, we brought in the Victoria Square and the city streets after a long and agonising um, debate, public debate, uh, the government basically said to us, because as, as you know or may not know, it is the council only can request a dry zone. It is the government that has to actually initiate it. But the government won't initiate it until it's requested by the, gov by the council. So uh, 
the government at the time um, said, look, we really wanted Victoria Square is, is getting very troublesome with uh, drinkers. Uh, we really want one. We said no for a long time because it is a very difficult, and you can see in the uh, gallery there are, are very different, and both with uh, views, both with very compelling arguments. Uh, so eventually, Lord Mayor Harbison did put it to the council. Um, it was lost. Um, then we went to the government, a small group of uh, selected councillors. Uh, I think it might have been a Liberal guy, I can't remember. Anyway, and said that we're not going to bring this in. This is a blunt instrument and you're not doing anything to alleviate the base causes of these things. Poverty, disenfranchisement, uh, lack of um, detox beds, da da da. We brought in then a raft of, uh, a whole new raft of services which uh, had never been seen before. Far more, uh, I don't want to insult the mover, but far more extensive than we have on the board there. Uh, and the government brought them in and we then, as quid pro quo, gave them what they wanted and declared a 24 hour dry zone in Victoria Square and the streets of Adelaide. It wasn't just Victoria Square, the Planet Nightclub down Perry Street was a place that the police really wanted uh, some, some more teeth in the laws, remembering that Hindley Street was already a, dry, a 24 hour dry zone then. Um, so we did, I just want to correct that historic kick at other councils. We have done a heroic effort there. Gradually over the years, those services have uh, declined and disappeared. But the council at the time that brought in the dry zones did not do that, just as a band-aid, did not do that, ignoring the base causes, and it did a fantastic job. Sadly, subsequent uh, governments have let that lapse. But this is a good motion, and it stands on the shoulder of giants. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I uh, can't um, support this motion. Um, and my position on dry zones has been consistent for a very long time. Um, members of uh, this council and indeed members of the community would remember that I was, when I was on the previous council, one of the uh, council's most outspoken critics of um, dry zones um, because of the punitive effect that they can have on vulnerable people in our community. And uh, my view on this hasn't changed. I am very, very concerned that introducing a 24-hour dry zone will actually um, compound the difficulties faced by vulnerable people in our city. It can potentially result in fines being issued to people that do not have the capacity to pay them. I think it compounds the stigmatisation of um, vulnerable people in our city. But I also think that it can move the problem around to other parts of our state. And if we push this issue away from the city centre, we could potentially be moving people further away from uh, supports and, and other things that are available to them in the city. I, um, I totally understand, um, however, the rationale for this, and I do understand the concerns of members of the community about um, safety and the need to address those issues. I understand that absolutely. And I live in the south of the city, so I'm aware of the issues. But I don't think this is the right solution, Lord Mayor. I think instead what this council should be doing is calling on the state government to fund social housing, to fund mental health support, and to be really focusing our advocacy on those efforts. And I know the local member for Adelaide, Rachel Sanderson, has been very active calling for a 24-hour dry zone. I wish she was as active calling for support for people with mental health issues in our city, rather than trying to um, score political points around this issue. Because I think that's the area that where we desperately need government assistance and government help. So if the member for Adelaide is listening, I hope that she picks up the phone to her boss, the Premier, and asks for some more money for mental health support, more money for social housing in our city, because that will deal with these issues. The other point I want to make, Lord Mayor, and, and it is a, a point around the classism in um, this uh, proposal, and it was made by um, the uh, member of the community who gave the deputation, whose name escapes me, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. But she made the point that there are some members of our community 
that are going to be better placed than others to make these applications um, to get an exemption to um, the uh, dry zone. And I think that's a very fair point. People that have mobile phones, people who have access to that kind of um, support will be able to get an exemption to this policy. And what it does is focuses on those with acute social disadvantage. And I do, just one second more, Lord Mayor, I do also fear the consequences that this may have as we head into our city's fringe season in terms of unanticipated consequences around um, activation in our city. So, Lord Mayor, I, I can't support this. Um, but as I say, I do understand the intention. But my view is this isn't the right solution. Let's get the money for social housing. Let's get the money for mental health support. Councillor Canold and Councillor Kelly. I suppose I can, uh, if we look at the, the urgent nature of uh, you know, the issue at the moment, as we are heading into our summer period, and, it, and it's, it's more not necessarily about a social housing issue, which is an issue, but that's not directly related here. Councillor Sims, please. The problem that we have here is that we have, uh, as, uh, the people that are uh, you know, having a have issue with, with alcohol and, and drug related, uh, they have been able to uh, fashion out a, a way of, of uh, um, you know, having their lifestyle and it has now been, become so embedded that uh, it needs uh, some urgent action in the short term to be able to first uh, uh, break the cycle and uh, so that I don't have a problem with the, say the South Park lands being a 24-7 dry zone simply because that puts a circuit breaker into that space. The issue I have after that is that um, we will also, at the same time, while we were trying to, uh, with this very, very imperfect way uh, of trying to change behaviour, it, it, it doesn't address that, and that's certainly, the, I agree with those comments. We also, subsequent to that, you need other services, you need other things involved, uh, other, other people to help to start to break it. So what, uh, and, and, but again, it also requires the, the, the people who are drinking too much and whatever substances they're taking, it has the, they need the desire to also want to do that. And obviously this won't uh, change that aspect. It only relocates it in many ways. I have a slight uh, problem with the, all the rest of the parklands simply because the rest of the community also suffers uh, uh, with that. And the difficulty is asking for an app that means the people who are, uh, you know, who do not have these issues, have to go uh, a step further and and have to, in a sense, seek permission to have a, a glass of wine or, or a can of beer or something on the remaining parklands, um, you know. And that that all about for the city, that is an issue because that discourages people from coming to the city uh, as part of their social activities. I mean, I don't have a problem with it during the week as a, as, a, as a compromise. So that from Monday to Friday that you'll have a 24 seven because that also uh, helps to create a circuit breaker because that at least allows the weekends where people are more, have a more social opportunity that they can go in without necessarily having to take an extra effort to use the park lands here in the city. They can use other park lands. But uh, overall, I mean, as, as a first, uh, I suppose a very, very uh, rough step, uh, this at least starts to uh, create a, a uh, this, uh, to disjoint the habit they have got, to discourage people to come into the city at this time of year simply because it is a casual and a more comfortable place to drink with more options and more services because the services we're delivering so far from of what you know, conversations is is, an, uh, is certainly uh, all well intentioned but it also uh, enables them to do uh, to live the lifestyle they are have without actually uh, obligating them or forcing them minute longer members without actually obligating them to start to address their problems and, and also uh, encouraging the services that are out there to start to, to uh, enable them to sort of break the cycle. And it is a problem that's very blunt. The, the simple fact is that you will just shift that uh, the, the drinking problem and uh, you know whatever other drugs that are associated with that to other places that are not going to uh, exclude them. So it means we haven't solved anything um, uh, and we're, we're not really going to address the issue other than you're going to you discourage them from congregating in a place. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, 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 I speak in favour of this and I will simply say uh, that I think that um, uh, I, I have been persuaded by the weight of argument 
uh, by the consultation that is manifest from uh, from Councillor Hyde, from the Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, on this matter. Uh, but I but I would stress that uh, it's important to recognise that, uh, for example, Councillor Sims' position has been consistent and it is a principled uh, position. And I think that it is not to derogate uh, from that uh, principle. I think it is very important that we don't lose sight of the ability to enunciate and articulate principle in these matters, the principle of human rights, the principle of recognising uh, freedom of association. Um, and, and, and these are incredibly complex uh, uh, variables that, that we have to juggle. Um, so I wish to say that I support the matter, but I do not wish to take away from the principle stance that is put forward on the other side on this matter. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Councillor Albert. Look, I uh, do second um, Councillor Kira's statement with regards to this. And look, I just wanted to uh, provide elected members with um, a little bit of a sort of history on this issue as well. From my perspective, on it, there was a significant amount of challenge in the previous council for us to even introduce this. And the reason it was introduced in the, in the first place in the, um, uh, as a dry zone and the way it was, it was having a significant level of impact on residents and businesses in the area, uh, granted uh, that people movement would have occurred, um, granted that some of the problems of relocated type of locations are still present at this issue as well, at this, uh, this location. But the difference between not having a dry zone and having a dry zone is the people that are impacted were no longer impacted. The problem still exists and potentially the problem may be uh, larger and have a greater issue, greater impact for us to manage. However, um, I refer back to the ratepayers that have been impacted, at least their quality of life, their businesses are maintained and they can continue having some type of a normal um, in their day where at the moment they're not, they're not doing so. Um, and this strikes at the heart of the issue, there's still significant um, um, obviously so, um, social services that we need to manage and, and look at in conjunction with the state government and police. But look, for now, I'll, I'll support this and I'll commend the Deputy Lord Mayor for bringing it to the Chamber. It's never an easy topic to discuss, discuss but I think it's one that we need to act on. Members? Councillor Martin? Uh, can I ask a couple of questions first of the administration? Um, I, I don't see anything, but is there anything in this to address the issue that some of the speakers have raised, that is the likelihood that this will simply disperse the problem people to other areas. Is there anything in there to address that? CEO. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, I think that um, it's on the record that uh, dry areas uh, are quite a uh, blunt tool. The uh, Liquor Licensing Commissioner has been known to describe uh, them as such uh, and that um, displacement is uh, quite a common factor of dry areas. So where would we expect people displaced from the city to go? I mean, will they go close by or...? They go alone. Sorry, uh, this to the administration is, to answer. Is there any question uh, or any information about what might happen? I mean, will this send them home or in fact will they just go to other suburbs of Adelaide? Is, do we know? Through you, Lord Mayor. It's really difficult to predict where people will move. Okay. And um, uh, there's a, a high-powered Premier's task force uh, working with government agencies and with uh, not-for-profits of looking at the issue of Aboriginal mobility and associated drinking issues. Uh, do, do we know what that task force thinks of this? Uh, I'm assuming they've considered it, have they? Through you, Lord Mayor. There is a very high level task force that has uh, been brought together by the Liquor Licensing Commissioner uh, with uh, senior staff from a range of agencies to work through the issues that we're experiencing at present. That task force uh, has uh, discussed a range of different mechanisms for supporting both uh, Aboriginal community members who move between their home communities and the city. Uh, and those range of um, uh, mechanisms to support those communities include um, uh, transitional accommodation uh, for community members uh, and a range of social services. That task force has uh, discussed uh, a dry area and uh, I think it's safe to say we'd see it as a last resort 
uh, tool in the... So it's not a, a recommendation or a decision? It's not a recommendation okay. for the task force at this moment. And the mover is proposing that we lobby for a uh, instantaneously issued and free liquor license class for small social gatherings in the parklands. Who would issue that? Uh, the, the licensing commissioner? Through you, Lord Mayor. Yeah, there's no mechanism under the legislation at the moment to uh, enable a new class of licence to be created. So that's something that the Liquor Licensing Commissioner would need to uh, take up if they saw that as a valuable step. So it would require a, a vote of Parliament to create that class of licence? It would require a change to legislation, yes. Okay. So effectively, if the government agrees to, to a dry zone in the parklands, there will be no drinking for anyone pending a change in the legislation that would allow for the class of licence that's proposed? Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, there are a range of other short-term liquor licensing um, tools at our disposal at the moment. So uh, there's a short-term liquor licence liquor license from Consumer and Business Services. Uh, depending on the nature of that event, the base application fee is $93 and applications have to be lodged with a minimum of seven days prior to the event. So there, that uh, licence is designed for pre-planned uh, social gatherings or small events. No, I understand there's an event one. I, I, I guess the question was asked, uh, I was asking was if I decided to have a beer with Councillor Canole on Sunday in the parklands with such a ban, I would be in breach of the legislation because there is no... Okay. Thank you. Unless you had a short-term legal licence. Yep. Okay, look, um, uh, and I am, I am hearing uh, the gallery and, uh, and look, I, I do say, uh, Lord Mayor, I absolutely understand uh, the, the circumstances that people are in, their frustration, uh, their anger, and the very real threat that they feel. I, I, I get that entirely. And, um, you know, I wouldn't like to be in that position myself. However, I, I do have a similar view to Councillor Sims. I have always voted against dry areas. I concede I am actually coming around to the concept of a 24-hour dry zone in the parklands. But for me to accept that, it would require the raft of social measures that uh, Councillor Moran talked about. The council needs to do something or at least be satisfied that government and not-for-profits are stepping into the space to, fu to, to fund the social services that will be required for the knock-on effects. Um, I, I don't see how displacement is solved. I, I fear that, um, and I know these are good people, but and they wouldn't wish it on anyone, but effectively what, what is being proposed is that we move the problem to another suburb of Adelaide, to another business and to, to other residents. That is essentially what's being proposed. And yes, and I hear, yes, that is what's being proposed. And, and that is the problem. It, it is so complex, it is so difficult. And, and it may be that a 24 hour dry zone is what's necessary. Um, but without those things, with, without the capacity for people to say, I'll see you in park 10 on Sunday at 10 and we'll have a beer or we'll have a bottle of wine and a picnic, which is what would happen, we would be saying, aside from licensed events, there is no capacity until the parliament sits and agrees to a legislative change. There is no capacity for anyone in this city to sit in the parklands with any substance or, or liquid that has a skerrick of alcohol. That's it, it's over. Um, I, would, I would prefer to wait until the parliament had had the opportunity to consider such a concept. Um, I know that's not going to happen, I, I, uh, and I'm not being political. I know that the support is there um, for this proposal. Um, I won't be able to support it. I, I would be delighted if the proposer decided to defer it or to make some amendment that would go some way to meeting those, uh, those possibilities. Um, you know, I just ask him to consider that uh, and a, a, a more um, substantial response would have my support. But as it stands, um, the prospect of just shifting this to another 
lot of residents and businesses somewhere else in Adelaide. Just, just one second, Lord Mayor, and I'll be finished. Um, just um, banning all consumption of alcohol in the parklands. No more weddings, no more gatherings of family. That's a big step. Um, and additionally, to, to impose this without any kind of um, social services to assist in, in uh, offsetting the displacement uh, um, it is, it makes it difficult, impossible to support. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to commend Councillor Hyde uh, for bringing this uh, motion to the chamber. Um, I, uh, I remember Councillor Hyde had a couple of uh, a uh, couple of things uh, that he put on his election material. One of them was tackling homelessness, showing leadership in that uh, in that field, and, and he has. Uh, and the other one was around antisocial behaviour, and uh, uh, and I think this one here speaks perfectly to it. Um, I uh, I also agree with what Councillor Sims said around uh, the state government and federal government uh, doing more uh, in their own agencies, such as uh, uh, say health. Um, uh, or, or social housing, but uh, I would just like to uh, um, remind Councillor Sims that uh, a couple of days ago we had a uh, half a billion dollar uh, announcement on, on social housing. So, uh, uh, so hopefully that will uh, um, slowly uh, take care of the uh, social housing needs. Um, I should just um, I should just say, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, that when it comes to social problems, and this is any social problem, whether whether if it's uh, substance abuse. Uh, whether if it's, uh, uh, I don't know, a domestic violence or whether if it's homelessness, we always fight these issues at two different ends. One is at the crisis end, when, excuse the phrase, when shits hit the fan, and the other one is at the prevention end. So uh, with this, I see that most of these points here talk to the crisis end, but that point four talks to the prevention end. And that's exactly what we need to do here. Yes, we do need to have those band-aids ready, but we, also be, we, all, we should also be looking at uh, long-term plans. We should be looking five years, 10 years, 20 years later on down the track to see whether if what we're doing now is going to improve things later on down the track. Uh, and I see that uh, this motion here is, uh, is trying to do that. So I do commend Councillor Hyde and uh, I uh, urge members to support this. Thank you. It's Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abraham. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yes, um, the other. Members, if not, I will go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I understand other councillors' concerns and the call for more support to be wrapped around this space. Um, in chatting with the sector, a lot of it isn't necessarily around resourcing, it's around the effectiveness of those resources, which is why, as opposed to the commissioners' um, uh, group, um, it's been suggested by a number of people that it actually should be um, a, an effort led by the Premier, considering Aboriginal Affairs sits in the Premier's um, uh, Department of Premier and Cabinet. So, um, and in having, in having that sort of uh, political impetus attached to it, we might be able to see some of the institutional barriers to actually addressing the root causes of these issues come down um, and uh, resources inside departments can be directed effectively to dealing with it. I'm not saying uh, it's not a resource issue, but I'm saying there are other things that we can do to make the system work more effectively. Um, uh, on the topic of uh, displacement, we know that's an issue, which is why we're actually looking um, uh, well, why I'm proposing the entirety of the parklands. Um, we have to consider it in two forms because of the Commissioner's timeline, because he'll actually go to, dare I say, community consultation on uh, part two of this motion because he's required to by law. Um, uh, but we do know that if we only make it part of the parklands, um, we will see issues, particularly on West Terrace, where there are two deaths um, of uh, Indigenous people uh, who were intoxicated that we know of. Um, uh, who was struck by a car where at, at a point that's essentially an eight lane highway um, on West Terrace. Um, uh, in addressing uh, again the concern about displacement, as Councillor Moran pointed out, um, uh, it's not uncommon for people to return home to country once the supply is turned off. The supply acts as the incentive, um, especially when you're addicted to a substance, you will go and seek it out wherever you can. Um, Adelaide, at the moment, colloquially, is referred to as party town. That's what it's referred to. And, and uh, I know because our nightlife might not suggest it, but for people wanting to seek alcohol, 
um, uh, where they can't get it on country and they can get it in our, in our, in our uh, suburbs and in our parklands. Um, that's what they're calling it, that's what they do. Um, at the moment, we're enabling that bad behaviour by only having the dry zone at certain times. Um, what this does at the moment, and as Councillor Abraham today pointed out, we have to attack it from both ends. We need to uh, keep the community safe right now. We need to engage in harm minimisation for those people drinking themselves into oblivion right now. Um, I mean, speaking about intoxicated people crossing the road every week, at least a handful of times around Whitmore Square and South Terrace, I have to almost completely come to a halt and have to drive with absolute care and due diligence, knowing that someone will probably walk out in front of me. And that's exactly that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Um, uh, earlier, earlier last week, actually, um, I, I had to call the police because there was an incident on Hutt Street, um, uh, a violent incident between, between two people who I assume were intoxicated based on their movements. So we need to secure the public safety now. Just one more minute, please. Um, we and need to sorry. minimise harm now, um, but we do need to fix this problem in the longer term. And um, I appreciate I might have Councillor Martin's support, but this will not be the last time um, that I bring uh, this sort of topic to the chamber, um, particularly around social services and what have you. I suppose I'll, I'll leave on this note, um, and it's similar to the note I started on when I moved this motion, and, and that is that I believe that every day that this dry zone is in place is a day that we are failing our community. We are failing the vulnerable Indigenous in our community. We are failing other people who are addicted to alcohol or other substances in our community. And we are failing the community at large who just want to be able to have that beer um, uh, in the park on a Sunday at any time. Um, we're failing everyone. And so this sets it up for um, just under a year. Uh, this will come back to council, I'm assuming, at the conclusion of that period. And we can have a serious think about how we've gone um, and how the government's gone during that time and see if we've made any progress. And if we haven't, we need to take a look at ourselves and see what more we need to do. Thank you. Um, members, I'll put that to vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Nine. Members, um, I beg your pardon. Thank you, Ed. If you can escort that gentleman from the premises, it would be much appreciated. Yes, thank you. First, do no harm. Thank you very much. Members, we're going to take a short break. We have been going for several hours now. Um, we'll have a recess for um, about 10 minutes. And so if, we, if, uh, if everybody could just have a short break and then we'll come back.
I'm going to move the recommendations of uh, 9.1, the recommendations from the committee of the 26th of November on block. I will call each one um, and if anybody wants to pull them out. So I'm sorry, I've got two hands up. Is that to move and second up going on block? Uh, no, I was actually just wanting to amend the... Um, sorry, it's very brief. Well, That's, I'll read each of them. If yeah, you put your hands up, if you want to pull it out. Recommendation one. To the Thank you. Time. So recommendation one, I have Councillor Sims. Um, recommendation two. Recommendation three. Recommendation four, recommendation five, sorry, I should name the title, Field Street Upgrade. Recommendation six, Creative and Cultural Vitality Dashboard. Recommendation seven, Live Music Backline Incentive Scheme. Recommendation eight, Minister's Report on Future Use and Status of Lot 14. So the only one we have pulled out is recommendation one. If I could actually, uh, we'll go to recommendation one first. Councillor Sims, you had an amendment? Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to move a, a variation. Uh, that is that council adopts the draft temporary use of public space policy attachment A to item 5.1 on the agenda for the meeting um, for public consultation with the addition of a revised guiding principle uh, one, public good. And the revised wording B, public space is a valuable asset. We have a responsibility in the management of the public space within the city of Adelaide. Oh, sorry, I thought this had been sent to you. Apologies. <laughs> public space is a valuable asset. We have a responsibility in the management of the public space within the city of Adelaide to ensure fair and might equitable want to slow access. Slow down just I'll, a little bit. I'll hand it over. I'll, 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 thank I'll you. just read it aloud first, and I'll give it over to you. Um, and that that is used for the public good. Is that a heading, Councillor? No, the, sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm not sure what's happening here. So, I just have to capture the amendment first, Councillor, and then I'll go back to Councillor Smith. Okay. Uh, so, members, there's been a, an amendment to paragraph one. Um, if you can all just take a quick moment to read the amendment, and then I'll look for a second. Councillor Martin, seconded. Councillor Sims. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Amendment. The rationale behind this amendment is uh, after um, the meeting, committee meeting the other uh, week, um, administration spoke to me about the implications of um, the original wording that I had put in committee and suggested some revised um, wording that they thought would um, better fit within uh, the consultation framework. So I've taken on board that advice. Um, that's the reason why um, I'm seeking to make this change. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is. Sorry, can I just ask for that vote again? Those in favour of the amendment? 
Those against? That is carried. Um, uh, members, um, then I am now looking for a mover to move recommendation two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Councillor Canole, I've already done that. Um, Councillor Moran, some members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against, that is carried. I will now go to the recommendations of the meeting of the 3rd of December. The recommendation one, uh, Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Councillor Spong. Uh, recommendation two, Tainton Muntilla uh, Riparian Restoration Project. Recommendation three, Prospect Road, Parklands Entry Improvement and Tree Removal, that's Councillor Martin. Recommendation four, Chinatown and Market District Safety. I actually saw Councillor Donovan first. Um, recommendation five, City of Adelaide Welcoming City. Recommendation six, City Bikeway Funding Deed. Uh, recommendation seven, there is an amendment that we need to put up. Recommendation eight, uh, the strategic plan progress report. Recommendation nine, unrecoverable debt write off. And recommendation 10, um, building inspection policies. So, uh, members, if I <coughs> could have a mover for recommendation one, two, five, six, eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> Councillor Knoll and a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, not to the mover. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, we will go back to Councillor Martin uh, on recommendation three. Um, Lord Mayor, I just wish to vote against this. My position is well known. I think this is crazy, and I will look forward to putting my hand in the air when I say against. Thank you. Members, anyone else wish to speak to recommendation three? If not, I'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Oh, sorry, my, my apologies, members. I need a mover for the recommendation because I didn't have a mover previously. Councillor Abraham today, second of Councillor Kouros. Uh, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Kouros? No. Members? No, we go to the vote. Those in favour? Hang on, we're talking about recommendation. Three. three. Recommendation okay. three. Those against? Okay. <laughs> that is carried. I now go to recommendation four, which is Chinatown and Master Market District Safety. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a little amendment, uh, which I think has been added in there. Um, so 2.3, just extending the eligibility criteria to include South Terrace and Hutt Street. And uh, another little amendment, sorry, I didn't send through, Jenny, is uh, to note that 65,000 instead of 50,000 would be included. Number, just scroll down a little bit. So extending the uh, eligibility criteria and just increasing the funding slightly. Number four, notice that 65. 65, thank you. Um, I look for a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan. Um, so thank you, Lord Mayor. Just in alignment with the idea um, of a trial, uh, as discussed in our uh, previous committee meeting, I'm uh, not convinced uh, about the, uh, the utility in general of this approach, but given we're going to be doing a trial, it, uh, it seems worthwhile to extend it out to a couple of the areas that are noted to be uh, needing some support at the moment. And uh, after checking in with Councillor Ho that this fits with his intended motion, um, it makes sense to just extend the trial to these areas. That also actually makes the trial a little bit more compelling in that we can compare the, uh, the outcomes of Chinatown to a couple of other precincts. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you. Yes, uh, in regards to running a good trial, it makes perfect sense to be comparing um, different areas. I think it will give us a, a richer array of results um, and feedback that we can solicit from the community as well. Um, on Hutt Street specifically, um, it's worth noting that Hutt Street previously in the more central part of the street has had decent uh, CCTV coverage traditionally. 
um, uh, notwithstanding the cameras that we installed on the southern end of the street. Um, but what we've seen, as we've seen the banks close on Hunt Street, we've actually seen uh, an exodus of good CCTV coverage of the street, um, which is why I think it's important for us to support those traders um, and the community in that area to ensure that they're getting adequate coverage um, in chatting to people in the precinct, I know there, there will be um, uh, some interest in this scheme um, and uh, people are keen to see us uh, trial this and potentially see the successes that we may take across the city with it as well. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Abian. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I don't support this. Um, and the reason being is we wanted to trial a pilot program. This is one of the um, one of the kind, I guess, one of the first time we've, we've attempted to try this. We've set a minimal budget to give it a go. And I think until we give it a go and see how it performs, I'm not prepared to spread it to other precincts and to the point of other councillors that wanted to consider Melbourne Street and other streets uh, anywhere where people potentially want to uh, have access to that style of fund if they feel that they need to have it. Then it's unfair for other ratepayers in other areas to be excluded out of the process um, whenever a matter, matter of fact, we would try it. Um, and the reason I'm happy to try it in Chinatown is because Councillor Ho has gone out and done a significant amount of work uh, with administration, with the police around the need for it, consultation with traders that have sort of they've come back saying, well, look, let's try it. So let's try it in the Chinatown area and the markets area. Uh, and if it's successful in that period of time, then potentially it might be a program that Council may want to roll out across the whole city with a bigger budget. If we think it's successful, provides a safer main streets and safer businesses, etc. I'm happy to do that. But at this stage, until we try it and get some runs on the board, whether it works or not, I'm not prepared to willy-nilly just open it up for anyone to have a security camera uh, set up uh, while it's on their shop. Uh, so I think that's really important. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Indeed, I wasn't going to support the amendment and I was going to ask Councillor Donovan to move a motion herself to run all this, I mean, all, save all the first. However, after listening to the deputation tonight from David and Kerry, I fully understand that's something we have to do right now, right away. If we can do it, let's do it from tomorrow. So I am happy to support the amendment, but only stick it to just add on South Terrace and Hart Street, not city road, not city wide, not anymore. Thank you. Okay, members, Councillor Martin. Um, I'm just wondering uh, whether the mover would consider amending this uh, to extend the scheme to all main streets in the city. Oh, God. Um, okay, well, I would like to move um, an amendment to the amendment. Um, we'll have to deal with this one first, Councillor Martin. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you. Is there any other speakers? Councillor Sims? Well, thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Oh, Look, um, ma sorry, sorry, sorry Councillor Sims. Sorry, members, I don't know if you heard that. This is an alternate motion, in which case Councillor Martin can make an amendment to an alternate motion as opposed to an amendment to an amendment. And then I will go to you, Councillor Sims. My apologies. Um, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, uh, I uh, wish to ask that it be extended to all other main streets in the City of Adelaide. And um, I don't have a seconder. Um, uh, I was going to ask Councillor Sims, but he's ideologically opposed. Therefore, um, that that lapses. Okay, then. You want to second it? No. Come on, morning, Mr. Valens, people. So, so sorry. Without a second of that, fails. I'll go back to. So, have I disqualified myself from speaking to the original? No, you can speak to Thank the original. You don't want well, to? <laughs> this, is, this is the point we have. You have to speak now because you're speaking. I can speak now. Thank you. Look, I, um, I hear what everybody is saying in this room that uh, Councillor Ho has done a great job and we shouldn't in any way detract from Chinatown. I hear that the South Ward councillors are saying, well, we've got a problem around uh, that building in uh, South Terrace and therefore we need it there. 
Um, but the truth of the matter is that all businesses in the city want it. And in fact, I attended a function last week with Councillor Kouros, and I was saying to North Adelaide businesses, look, there is a proposal coming up. This is at the Business Association, where it's being proposed that there is a subsidy for businesses installing CCTV camera, which will have the effect of improving your safety, plus providing a record to police of any antisocial or illegal behavior. Now, it will come as a great surprise to you, but everybody in the room thought it was a great idea. And in fact, one or two said to me, well, how come Chinatown gets that and we don't get it? And the answer was, well, I don't know, but I, I will ask. I will ask why we can't do it. And uh, indeed, uh, some of the uh, precinct association people were saying to me, well, if you don't get this, this is really unfair because we have safety issues. And indeed, a business person from Melbourne Street said there was a robbery there recently, and had they had CCTV camera, uh, camera coverage, they could have provided images to the police. Now, that seems to me to be a compelling argument for providing this facility, not only to uh, Councillor Ho's constituents, but to Councillor Abrahimsonis and Councillor Canoles and Councillor Moran's. Um, this, is a, um, this is a really important issue. And yet it's being proposed that we do a trial in Chinatown while crime is rampant in the city and there are no CCTV cameras. It is quite a ridiculous circumstance. Um, you know, I've got to say to you, Lord Mayor, that in North Adelaide, we have as much crime as Chinatown. Most of them are white collar, but we have as much crime in North Adelaide as they do in Chinatown. So, and you know, CCTV camera is good at capturing white collar criminals as well as blue. So, uh, Lord Mayor, you know, I just ask that the chamber reconsider this and extend it in fairness to all businesses in the city not just the privileged in Chinatown. So, sorry, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Are we speaking to this Yeah, and look, I, I have um, some empathy for uh, Councillor Martin. I'm sorry I couldn't second that, Councillor. I am um, opposed to um, this concept. Um, so the idea of rolling it out even further um, worries me. Um, you know, when, I, when this was discussed at committee last week, uh, Lord Mayor, I flagged at the meeting that once we went down this path with one uh, street in the city, we would have others coming, making a bid. And as sure as night is day, here we are one week later with a proposal to expand this plan for outsourcing of mass surveillance in our city. I think it's ill-conceived. Um, we've already heard from our administration that there are, aren't any clear uh, caveats or rules around how this might work because we're going to get it approved first and work out the details later. I think there are serious issues around access to this data. I think there are serious issues around uh, civil liberties for law-abiding citizens going about their business in um, the um, city of Adelaide. I won't say too much on, um, on it, Lord Mayor, because I don't want to draw the wrath of Councillor Ho um, again. Uh, he did savage me last week when I um, articulated my alternative view. But I think it's a very important principle that we don't allocate money like this when um, there isn't a clear evidence base to do so. And the solution, when we're dealing with a proposal that's to try and address a problem that doesn't really exist, um, with a fake uh, evidence base, is not to expand the trial further. It's actually to go back to the drawing board and look at other options. So this is just the wrong approach, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I have Councillor Kerr and Councillor Moran. Lord well, Mayor, I think it is great. I think it is great that we're changing the standing orders to monthly meetings because we're here it twice already. <laughs> uh, Councillor Moran. <laughs> Sorry, I missed seconding Phil's motion, but it would have been a uh, exotic motion anyway. Obviously, <laughs> it's. Uh, uh, Obviously, this uh, should be given to all businesses and indeed residents who want it. The safer areas, such as North Adelaide, 
probably won't need it because you still have to pay for half the uh, CCTV camera. So if you don't want, need one, you're not going to have one. I think it's very dangerous, though, and while well, sympathetic to street safety, to uh, specify the streets that you're giving the um, giving the uh, whatever it's called to. It does uh, rather outline that South Terrace and Hutt Street and Chinatown are dangerous areas. Now they're not. They're not. Da Hutt, Hutt's, a bit of the end of Hutt Street is. But South Terrace, maybe because of the parklands, but Chinatown, seriously, is not a dangerous place. You've got to be really careful that you don't actually um, have a self-fulfilling prophecy there. But can we just not debate anything else tonight? <laughs> That's entirely up to the Chamber, Councillor Moran. Can I suggest that we just get them done? Councillor Moran, we're talking to the motion. If you finished, I suggest that we will... Okay, Councillor Abraham today. Well, Lord Mayor, I'll make it short, sharp and shiny. Not as long as my last name. How's that? Sorry, what was that? Members, please. Councillor Abraham Lord Mayor, the idea of a pilot is that you start off small, you start off in a, in a, in a controlled manner, and then from there you expand it. Now, the, the Wright brothers, the first time they flew, I think they, they flew one or two people, uh, and the flight was. The point of order relevance, no, Lord Mayor. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you how this was. The, 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 the flight was under a minute. Right? Now you imagine if they stack a whole lot of people on that plane and they send it from one continent to another. That's, that's the whole idea of a pilot. It's to start off small, get the concept right, get it all right, set the structure in place, and then from there roll it out. This is what we like to see here. Because the, the, the thing that I, that, I, that I question then is that if, the, if this goes through and, uh, and all uh, main streets do, um, do get all, no, not, not that, no, no, but I'm just saying if, if, if we were to change our minds and, and extend it throughout the city of Adelaide, throughout the main streets, then I would have traders from Bank Street, from Peel Street, and from all over the city come and knocking on the door saying, I want one too. Yeah. And we're debating this alternate motion here, which is actually to roll it to some. Okay, some I'll go back to the, I'll go back to, 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 to my concept as, uh, as, as, the, as a pilot, it's starting off small, let's get it right, and then from there we can roll that. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, sir. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Donovan. You, you need to you need to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That fails. So we go. Council's division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. <laughs> Councillor Ho, Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Donovan, yeah. Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran. I oh, should have taken a photo of that one. That's great. Um, we now go back to the substantive. So I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Ho, and a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak to it? No, sense. Deputy Lord Mayor, no. members, if not, uh, Councillor Ho to sum up. Sum up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, thank you. Members, that takes us to recommendation seven, and there is a, an amendment. Um, there are uh, two small amendments, one in 1.3, which is just to make it consistent with 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, which is on a Tuesday of each month, and also 0.3, which authorises the Chief Executive Office to make incidental amendments to the committee's terms of reference as required to reflect the, count, the uh, purpose of Council's decision, which is part of our terms of reference. We need to alter the terms of reference to be able to alter the meeting structure. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. And I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Knoll, Councillor Abia, did you wish to speak? I preserve my right. I think we've debated this enough in the committee. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. No, Councillor Sims. You got that wrong, uh, Deputy, uh, former Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, this is an issue that does need to um, be debated. 
we're talking about reducing the number of meetings that um, we have in this chamber. You know, it's very funny, um, Lord Mayor, seeing the reactions tonight as members sat in the back room quickly um, shoveling down uh, snacks in a five minute recess. Um, and everybody was saying, gosh, this is a long meeting. How much longer have we got to go? You know, what are we going to do? Well, Lord Mayor, time to get used to it. Time to get used to it because this is the new order of this city council. Once we move to monthly meetings, we will be here till midnight, Lord Mayor. Once a month, this will be our council meetings. It'll be a war of attrition as we sit here until the early hours of the morning, dealing with the agenda that is being banked up. So I suggest members pack a sleeping bag, um, you know, to their meeting back in January because we're going to be here for a very long time and we're going to have lots and lots of long discussions ahead, particularly because um, when we're not meeting at council, we're going to have endless workshops with lots of talking and no decision making. I know Councillor Apprehensive have talked about pilots and, you know, trialling new ideas. Well, this certainly is a novel idea, Lord Mayor. Lots of dithering, lots of delays, but no decisions and no delivery. That is what this motion is dooming Council to in 2020. The new year is a time for, you know, fresh beginnings, new starts. And um, this has been a challenging year for this council, Lord Mayor, in my opinion, challenging uh, for many of us. And I'm disappointed that um, as a result of this motion, um, the year will be starting off very much as uh, it's ended. That is with division and dithering and delay, because having a meeting once a month is going to set that tone. And Lord Mayor, I can't quite keep up with the agenda of, um, of Team Adelaide, you know, it's such a riveting, exciting agenda, axing dinners and, uh, and other such things, but also it's, you know, gagging people, stopping people speaking, stopping people meeting. What it is about is trying to silence dissenting voices on this council, Lord Mayor. I know some people on this council want me to shut up. I have no intention of doing so. I uh, have sat in the Senate and been there for, I think we had the longest ever debate in um, Australian political history. It ran for 27 hours, Lord Mayor. You. So you can't out talk me, councillors. You can't get me to shut up. I've got a bank of fresh ideas. I've got them ready to roll in 2020. And it doesn't matter whether we meet once a month or once every fortnight, <laughs> I'll come in here guns blazing and uh, trailing those uh, ideas uh, here in this council chamber. But Lord Mayor, this is an intention to try and silence this uh, council. Just a second um, more, Lord Sorry, Mayor. members. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is an intent, this is designed, Lord Mayor, to try and silence the council. <laughs> and um, I think the community will see this for what it is an effort to reduce transparency, an effort to reduce accountability, and an effort to silence dissenting voices. Well, strap yourselves in, Team Adelaide. 2020 is going to be a cracker. It will. It will be a cracker. Um, Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? Yeah, just a couple of words. Um, I find it quite interesting to make comments about dissenting and about uh, a stifling debate when uh, you've been able to do it so many times and so for so long. And I think it's quite interesting that uh, this is not going to uh, stifle any debates. It just means that we'll be able to have it one night a month rather than, you know, four nights a month. <laughs> Councillor Martin. I, I don't understand the amendment. What, what, what incidental amendments are required that we need to give a broad authority for the CEO to fiddle with? Thank you. I will ask the CEO to answer that. That's three, Lord Mayor. I'm not sure I'm going to fiddle with it, but I'm ready. <laughs> three, the Lord Mayor. So. This um, third point has just been added for clarity purposes, really. You could argue that the decision as it would stand would rescind the existing terms of reference, but to provide clarity, what we will do is through the CEO's delegation, amend 
the terms of reference to reflect exactly what's uh, in that uh, recommendation or decision right there. So even if the council were to decide to be silent on that, um, it would still potentially result in an amendment to those terms of reference, but this provides more clarity as to that that can indeed be done um, by the CEO to reflect the changes um, as set by this particular recommended decision. I should also add that in the absence of doing anything, um, you do need terms of reference to run the committee and the existing terms of reference uh, relate to a complete different governance structure. So I think it's fair to say that this helps in setting clarity around the decision. Well, Rudy, that's as clear as mud. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, look, I, I will also uh, speak against this. Um, um, and I echo the comments of Councillor Sims. Uh, if you think this is onerous, you wait, you wait. We will certainly be here at midnight. And those of you who have complained previously that it was too late to eat at eight o'clock, you will not have the will to eat or drink for <laughs> days after council meetings. They will leave you wearied. I, I actually believe this is an attempt, Lord Mayor, to minimise debate, to avoid criticism. Um, if you can't gag the members, you stop them me, and that's exactly what's occurring here. And for the information of members, um, I, I would just point out to you now that uh, with one voting meeting a month in the City of Adelaide, we will be joining other less diligent councils like Port Augusta and the District Council of Grant at Mount Gambier, where those councils uh, meet once a month, but they actually vote twice a month. They have a committee meeting. Have a different committee. And this is the furphy that's been created. Uh, Councillor Kira says, what about Melbourne? Well, <laughs> Melbourne actually has a council meeting, a voting council meeting once a month. Thank you for the question. However, they have two voting committee meetings a month as well. Three voting meetings, council and what's called future Melbourne committee meetings, at which motions are considered, voted on, questions are asked, motions are asked from the council, uh, from the floor of council. We, we are actually now among the councils in South Australia who meet less regularly, less regularly. And that means necessarily that there's less opportunity for people to put proposals to council for them to be considered. And moreover, ratepayers are also big losers because they will not be able to make deputations. And when I joined this council, every committee, every council meeting could be addressed by ratepayers. And we had lots of them. And I know members in this room groan every time a ratepayer makes a deputation. The truth of the matter is, it's one of the most democratic things that we can do to allow our ratepayers to speak to us. Now, I've heard the arguments, Councillor Kira for one saying, and Councillor Abiat too, we talk to people in the street all the time, or alternatively, we were elected to make decisions they don't matter until the next election. But the truth of the matter is, it's an outlet for a, a, a ratepayer to come to this council and speak to us. That opportunity in the space of a few years has gone from four to one. It is appalling. It really is. And instead, it is likely that the administration will fill the void uh, left by the frequency of meetings. And that's an illustration. Now, I know that the CEO will feel obliged to say that there is nothing we do without the authority of council. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, administration will fill the void. Uh, Councillor Kerra. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm compelled to speak only because of the uh, suggestion, which I think is uh, fallacious, that this is somehow um, uh, relevant to the number of deputations. I've been here for a year. Uh, I have not seen a backlog of deputations, Lord Mayor. In fact, the majority of the meetings that, that I've been to, the majority of the meetings have had no deputations. And I think that there is ample opportunity for the Chamber, if there is a backlog of uh, deputations presented to us, to allow for those deputations to be presented. So I think that is entirely spurious. I think Councillor Martin, you know, he's talking about the death of democracy. Oh my goodness. I am sure, Lord Mayor, I'm sure that those ancient Greek philosophers 
philosophers, uh, those ancient Greek philosophers who came up with democracy, no doubt their ashes are fluttering in agitation in their, uh, you know, in their Gretchen urns right now, because because the ultimate flowering of democracy, Lord Mayor, the ultimate flowering of democracy, Adelaide City Council, the City of Adelaide Council is meeting monthly instead of fortnightly. Oh my God. Councillor Moran. Uh, I move the motion before. Yeah. I need to second it. So, Councillor Ho, you seconded that? Thank you. M members, the motion is put. Yes. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Sorry, there were hands going up everywhere there. Can I actually ask those in favour? No, no. Those against? We are voting on the motion to be put, but the hands were not all going up. So, we are voting for the motion to be put. Those in favour? Those against? So that's lost. So, members, that's lost. So does anybody else want to speak to the motion? Um, you've already spoken, Councillor Martin. Question. Lord Mayor, uh, now that there is just one opportunity a month for ratepayers to speak to Council, what is the limit on the number of ratepayers who may speak with Council at each Council meeting? Would you like to answer that? Sorry. Standing order state five at the discretion of the Lord Mayor to allow more. Thank you. As we did tonight, allow uh, one that came in after the time. Are there any other speakers to this motion? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Albion, to sum up. Look, just in summing up, Lord Mayor, um, this is a good... Sorry, Councillor Mayor. What? I haven't spoken at all. You think you're going to lose I'm Councillor Moran, Councillor Abiyad, can you sum up, please? I'm going to just have uh, negative, negative remarks on record. Uh, at yeah. least have a positive one. Right? Oh, no, no, we are on record. So uh, it's really important, uh, I think, is this. We have an opportunity over the next 12 months to trial this. Um, the workshop, the committee, single council meeting, and work through the process. Um, Councillor Ho said this in one of the meetings, actually, where he said, it's not about the quantity of the meetings, it's the quality of the meetings and the decisions. And the quality of the shit. And, <laughs> and <laughs> well, thanks to a couple of uh, distinctive councillors that love the sound of their own voice, sometimes... Oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes, oh, sometimes oh, there's the... Uh, Members, sometimes, can we act... I know everybody's getting tired. Can we please let Councillor Abbey and sum up so we can Sometimes move? that's the result we end up having to deal with. Um, look, I, I think well, this would work. I'm quite confident this will work actually, but we'll give it a go over the next 12 months and we'll re, um, re, um, re look at it again at the end of next year and things need to be changed again and not changed again. I'd ask members to support it. Members, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is carried. Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerra, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Kuhn. Members, that takes us to advice recommendations of the Reconciliation Committee. Um, I will move those on block. Recommendation one was the stretch wrap for 2018 to 2021. Did you wish to? Pull that out? No, I'm asking if members want to pull any of these out. Stretch wrap. The second is the resignation of City of Adelaide Reconciliation Committee Strategic Agency Representative. And the third is the Ghana Yurta Aboriginal Corporation update. If not, I will ask for a mover to move on block. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. And a second to Councillor Kouros. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Councillor Donovan, uh, Councillor Kouros? No, members? Councillor Donovan, sum up to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Oh, we get there. Lord Mayor's report. Well, Councillor Sims, who has just left the room, did a lovely little segue. Um, it's more of a statement tonight. 
So members, as you're all aware, as public officers and council members of the council, we are appointed to represent the interests of all residents in Rape Pass to provide community leadership and guidance and to promote the interests of the city. We're charged with a commitment to serve the best interests of our community and indeed we took an oath in giving effect to this role to act, to act honestly and to perform and discharge our official functions and duties with reasonable care and diligence at all times and to the best of our ability. However, these objectives can only be achieved when we commit to working together constructively, when we as a governing body work towards upholding the values of honesty, integrity and accountability and transparency, transparency which values in turn generate community trust and confidence in the council. We are each representatives of open, responsive and accountable government, charged with making decisions that are in the best interests of our community. Robust debate among members, both in the chamber and out, conducted in a respectful manner, manner is in keeping with these statutory responsibilities. However, all too often in recent times, I've witnessed personally, observed in the media and received comments from morale payers, rate payers about blatant displays of disruptive, inappropriate or offensive behaviours. These exchanges cannot and do not serve to ensure we're giving effect to our statutory obligations to work together constructively in serving the best interests of our community and promoting the interests of the city. These behaviours affect the reputation and image of the council and also each one of us personally. It reflects poorly on how we work or don't work as a team and allows external opinion to be cast on our ability to govern. So as each of you head to our holiday break, I urge you not only to make time to enjoy the company of your friends and family, but also reflect on the importance of your obligations as an elected member. I look forward to each uh, to you each starting 2020 with renewed vigour and a commitment to working together collaboratively and constructively so that we may focus, focus on um, growing our economy, strengthening our communities and creating unique experiences in the City of Adelaide. I'll ask for someone to accept the report. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, that takes us to uh, item 11, 11.1, .1, which is reports from council members. And I'll look, look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin. Oh, only just to thank uh, the councillors uh, after lodging uh, my request for their reports on their travel. I see that they've been included in the councillor reports, which is great. Um, uh, there is a, a couple of things I'd observe. The first is uh, the um, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor visited Sydney. But there's no mention of how the booze up went. Uh, at the end of the function, and it is described as a one-day conference. It did, in fact, begin at midday, so that would be a half-day conference. Uh, and the other thing I would ask, Lord Mayor, is that when ratepayer money is expended in this way on travel, uh, that the ratepayers are treated to more than nine and ten lines of description of the benefit to the city of Adelaide. Um, I calculate that to be worth somewhere in the order of $100 to $150 a line, uh, something substantial that informed the elected body of the, the matters that have been learned that could be of benefit to the city rather than how important it is to be there or alternatively of what it would be like to have in a faraway time something Excuse similar. Excuse me, point of order, Lord Mayor, sorry to interrupt you, Councillor Martin, but are we going to have the opportunity to speak to... Um, Absolutely. Okay, so... Um, okay. Oh, Lord Mayor, can we have an end to this, this rising to raise an objection that has no no fundamental uh, right. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, do I have not the right to ask a question in regards to this? No, you don't. Okay. Sit down. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, can I ask this? Sit down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lord Mayor, I, I conclude by making the point that a nine or ten line explanation for the expenditure of enormous ratepayer sums is not an adequate response. Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Sims. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I wanted to advise you of um, an award that has been uh, provided to the City of Adelaide staff. Um, I'm not sure if the team is still here to present the award. Um, maybe not, so we might hold off and do it um, at the next uh, council meeting. But just to flag with you, Lord Mayor, that the City of Adelaide project, Shaping Streets and Green Spaces, has received a commendation for improving planning processes and practices at the 2019 Planning Institute of Australia Awards for Planning Excellence. Um, and um, we will present an award uh, to you at the next meeting in the new year. That's lovely. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, would anybody else like to speak to the report? Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, just wanted to speak to you in regards to my trip in regard to in Melbourne. Um, so, hence I was, why I was asking the question if I had the opportunity to do so. Um, I was recently there only uh, a week ago, um, so the uh, report is coming into council today. Um, so, following the motion whereby I requested administration to prepare a report on the benefits of the multicultural hub in the city of Adelaide, um, I was, uh, it was an insightful visit to the hub in, uh, in Melbourne, uh, and I got to speak with Ames Australia and also the Melbourne City Council and dis discuss with them how it works uh, to provide the service that they have for the migrants. The multicultural hub in Melbourne was established in 2008. It, it is owned by the City of Melbourne and managed by AIMS Australia. AIM provides uh, the core services for the settlement, training and employment um, services for refugees and the newly arrived migrants. Um, the hub facilitates uh, opportunities for cultural expression and participation, learning, social connection and, and a celebration for diverse culture, language and faith backgrounds um, within a community space. Uh, as a daughter of migrants that uh, arrived in Australia in the 60s, leaving behind a country uh, that was suffering conflict, um, I, I understand the challenges that the, the migrants faced. And uh, although the, uh, the government opened the gates for migrants in the 60s, they weren't supported. Um, my parents worked very hard um, to establish themselves in this country, found jobs, bought houses, um, but what was missing was the ability to be able to connect with the Australian culture. Um, they lived within their own community and uh, didn't have the ability to branch out um, further because of the fear and because of the language barriers um, that they faced coming to Australia. To have had a multicultural hub when they arrived in the 60s, it would have given them the opportunity to um, you know, connect more um, within the new country that they were settling in. And I found it very insightful to how um, that they do that in the multicultural hub in um, Melbourne. Um, there are so many issues with new migrants coming to Australia. Um, you know, they've got, you know, they've got, you know, it comes a, a mental health issues, they've got to, to adapt with them finding jobs, they've got to, you know, find uh, houses and accommodation. So working through the language and having that support mechanism um, really helped them um, move around the city a lot, get to know Melbourne, uh, or the city that multicultural hub is in. So to be able to have this in our city will be such a, a, an advantageous thing for the community, for the migrants that come um, into the city of Adelaide and for them to be able to settle and have a new life here. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit foggy because it's a bit late in the day, but um, uh, just in response to Councillor Martin's comments, I didn't go to the dinner in the end. You'd be, you'd be joyous to hear. Um, uh, I know what, what, what concern you have for my social life. And, and after coming in, uh, getting on a red eye actually, the cheapest flight out to Sydney that day, um, uh, getting to the airport and going uh, to, the, to the conference venue you know, with about half an hour to spare for that 12, 12 p.m. start that you noted. Uh, which obviously I didn't set. Um, uh, we then uh, went all day um, and uh, I was too tired, so I didn't go to the dinner in the end, Council Martin, which I'm sure you're very disappointed about. Um, nevertheless, the conference itself, um, despite the claims that were made when I was outside this chamber, um, it was not a junket. Um, uh, I've worked in politics, I know what junkets actually look like. Um, that was not a junket, that was a work trip. Um, it was actually a triple CLM sanctioned conference that included heavy elements of nightlife discussion, 
community safety, planning policy, and all other realms of public policy that relate to nighttime economies. Now, it was actually quite interesting, and, and I learned quite a bit. Of course, um, we uh, also had a City of Adelaide staff member with us, um, noting that it was also coinciding with the Capital City Board Mayor's um, uh, committee meeting as well. Um, so I think there were a few uh, good take-homes that came out of it. Of course, we were joined by the Global Nightlife um, uh, advocate, who's the um, uh, mayor of the city of Night of the city of Amsterdam, um, and it was insightful to, to learn and hear things from them, um, but also to see how they do things in places such as California, San Francisco, um, New York as well, um, uh, considering Council Martin had such uh, intrigue at the um, from DIY to WTF workshop. That workshop was actually uh, centered around the story of, um, of a place called House of Yes, um, in America, and uh, basically the crux of it was that um, these folks just wanted to get together and make a, a space which could be compared to a space that a lot of the people that performers are coming with the fringe might use, you know, um, places where non-conformists can go and what have you. Now that space started out as a completely unregulated and strictly speaking legal space before eventually um, transitioning after a few variations into a legitimate um, venue that was a place where people on the fringes of society could go celebrate um, uh, and have a good time in amongst their community. Um, uh, that was an interesting story in and of itself um, because it, it told me as a public policy maker how we might be able to encourage um, uh, specific avenues for businesses that are perhaps illegitimate to become legitimate. And I'm thinking about some of the warehouse parties and things that, that we might see in the Adelaidean suburbs um, and around the city. And of course, as you drive nightlife underground with things like lockouts and what have you, you are then faced with the situation that you get these, uh, these illegal activities occurring. So um, it was a highly informative conference. Um, and if Councillor Martin wishes to interrogate me about it further, um, he can always speak to me offline. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. What can I say, sir? Excellent. Those in favour? That is against. That report is received. Thank you. Uh, we now go to uh, 12.3, uh, which is Lord Mayor's travel to the United States, and I'll hand over to the Deputy Lord Mayor to take the chair. Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor. Not too bad, actually. <laughs> um, all right, I think a mover for item 12.3, Lord Mayor travel to the United States. I have Councillor Abia. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Abia Himzadeh. Councillor Abia, do you wish to speak? I was at my right stage. Councillor Abia Himzadeh. Right, thank you. Councillors, Councillor Martin. Uh, just a question of the administration. At 3.2, the report says the City of Adelaide will be developing a practical path to a presence at lot 14. What is it envisaged by that? Yeah. Matt, can you answer folks? Through the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, a lot of activity down at, um, the, around startups and entrepreneurship on Lot 14 um, is ticking the boxes for council strategic objectives. So um, it's quite it's not unusual for um, our staff to be down there um, on a regular basis. So um, if there was a, an opportunity to actually have a bit of a hot desk down there for City of Adelaide staff to collaborate with the um, with Lot 14 counterparts. Um, am I to take that to mean that the City of Adelaide will establish an office at Lot 14? No, it's just a hot desk type of arrangement. Okay, and one other question um, of the administration. I note that the administration cannot determine the number of people who will be travelling with the Lord Mayor at a cost of ten to fifteen thousand dollars per person? Um, would the administration explain why we can't determine whether it will be one, two, or three people travelling with the Lord Mayor? Three Lord Mayor, I understand. Definitely Lord Mayor. I understand that um, 
we're still finalising the program. It is likely to be the Chief of Staff travelling with the Lord Mayor and may well be the Director of Growth, but that's yet to be confirmed. Can we have an undertaking from the administration that will attempt to limit the number of the entourage to perhaps two? That would be maximum $30,000 cost. I don't think that's contemplated in this motion, so I'm not sure if they can make that undertaking yet. But if we could get an undertaking that they'd let us know where they land, at least, obviously, you Through you, Deputy Lord Mayor, the program is still being finalised. Um, the, the selection of key staff to attend these sorts of things is at my discretion. It is usually done within budget, and I would make a determination when it's appropriate to do so. Um, that's the normal process, and I can just assure Council that we will be as responsible as necessary. Councillors, does anyone wish to counsel? Um, I'd ask? just like to have, I will vote against this, but I would like to have some assurance that we'll have an indication of how many people are in the entourage. I think that's naturally reported in terms of things, anyways. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? If not, I'll go to Councillor Abia to sum up. Just in summing up, look, this is a capital city committee. The Lord Mayor has a, a very vital role in connecting us to the rest of the world. Um, and there's a lot of exchange that happens on that. I've also got to say that this is probably by far the first council I've been on that's had the least amount of interstate and overseas travel compared to other councils. Um, especially the last term of council, where I think there was a significant larger amount of travel given the relationships we're forging uh, with China. Um, we have had, we've got an existing relationship with the US. Uh, the state government has made it clear that they consider um, Houston now as a partner in that sense with a state trade office that will establish itself there in the region. I think it's imperative for us as a council to be able to use that state government opportunity as well to be able to connect with the region and connect with us as the city and see if we can drive some trade or cultural opportunities for Adelaide. So I'd ask members to support this and as we heard from the CEO this is a, something that we've already budgeted for and something that is important for us to do. Thank you. I put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried by the Lord Mayor to retake the chair. Members, that takes us to 12.4, which Lord, is... Lord Mayor, I need to declare a, a material conflict of interest given I am seeking approval to attend uh, the summit and therefore I will leave the room. Thank you, Councillor Sims. So, uh, members, I'm looking for a mover for the attendance at the National Climate Emergency Summit by Councillor Sims. I have a question, please. I, I beg your pardon, sorry? Sorry, I had a question. But happy to sorry. sorry, Councillor Moran, were you moving? And a seconder? Councillor Donovan? Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Councillor Donovan? No. Members? Can I just say for the record that I will be voting against this. I don't approve of travel uh, by elected members um, and uh, this falls into the category. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I have Councillor Abiad and Councillor Kerr. Just a question first. I, I guess um, for me, it would make sense that Councillor Sims is attending. Is he representing council or is he attending the event? Because that's one thing that wasn't clear um, I guess in the uh, in the report, um, Councillor Sims seeks the opportunity to attend. So if he is seeking the opportunity to attend, um, is that because council has been invited and the Lord Mayor has asked him to represent, or was he attending anyway? Um, and um, he's basically there just on uh, as a as a councillor in his own right. It says represent. None of it. The report doesn't say that. So I'm just asking a question. 
Just to uh, just to clarify, so an invitation hadn't been forthcoming directly to the Lord Mayor to be able to attend, so it's not looking for Councillor Sims to attend on the Lord Mayor's behalf. Okay. Um, however, in terms of representing the City of Adelaide, it would be representing our existing policy positions um, in relation to climate emergency um, and in relation to our other uh, aspects of our sustainability agenda. Thank you, Anthony Sewell. If that is the case, then why does the recommendation say to represent the city if he's instigated this in his own right? See you. Thanks, Ben. That's what I told. That's all. Yeah, happy to take on board the feedback. Councillor, it was intended, uh, as I say, in relation to representing the City of Adelaide's policy positions and, and therefore being there in that context um, sure. on Council's behalf. Um, well, look, if this is what we're, I, I'm happy, look, I guess I'll state my position. I am happy to support Councillor Sims attending, but not as a council representative, um, because that's not, council wasn't invited in the first place to attend. So if it's his will to attend, and I think there's an educational process there, which it could be fit, that's fine. I don't trust that Councillor Sims will present council's views with regards to climate um, climate change accurately, to be honest. I think he has his own agendas when it comes to this, and that's my personal view, and I'm happy for that to go on public record. Um, we've already hearing from administration that we've declared climate emergency. We haven't done that. If he's going to go there and talk about that um, at that forum, I would have a significant issue, and so will our ratepayers. My ratepayers will have a problem with it. So I think it's important to note that um, we need to get the semantics clear on this. If Councillor Sims had instigated or he's received a personal invitation to attend as a councillor, then he's not representing council. He's attending in his personal capacity as an elected member for the City of Adelaide. If the Lord Mayor has received an invitation, and this is protocol, if the Lord Mayor has received an invitation and the Lord Mayor wishes to send the councillor on her behalf or the city's behalf, to represent the city, then he is a representative of the city. Uh, if I am wrong in that uh, assertion, please correct me. Uh, but if I'm not, I probably wouldn't support uh, this. And I would flag that if this motion is not successful, that an alternative recommendation be approve the travel and associated costs for Councillor Sims to travel to Melbourne in February 2020 um, at the national to the National Climate Emergency Summit. Did you wish to make that amendment now? Um, I am I am happy to do that if you're prepared to accept it, um, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to seek a second. Members, thank you, Councillor Knoll. Okay, and look, I've said my piece on this. For me, this is a protocol issue. Um, and again, Lord Mayor, it's, um, I'm, I'd be interested in your view um, before the vote of how you would like for this to be addressed from a protocol moving forward. If you would like for the councillor to represent the council, then that's your prerogative. Um, and I'm happy to respect that if that's the outcome that you wish to see. But just to have on record for administration, I think in the future, if the council is invited, I think it's important that you recommend a representative to this council if the Lord Mayor is unable to attend. However, if the council has been invited in their own capacity, we all have in the past, um, then that's just a, an individual invitation to that councillor um, and not in a representative capacity of council. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Councillor Kerrer. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm going to uh, speak against this in its original and amended form. Um, I think. Um, uh, I think, I think there's too much travel at Great Bay's expense. I think there's too much travel. Um, I voted I voted against I voted against Councillor Hyde's uh, travel. Uh, that is not to take away from his uh, report or anything that he did, but I think that, uh, that there is too much travel. In the case of the Lord Mayor, Lord, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, it, is, it is arguable. Uh, I think it is tenable uh, in the case of the Lord Mayor that there is a case for the Lord Mayor to visit other states and other countries. Uh, because uh, the Lord Mayor uh, will provide opportunities, uh, will, will, will enable a level of interest, a level of potential uh, investment, a level of potential uh, visitation to the country uh, and to the city um, that is unique to that role. And I think the current Lord Mayor serves that role, uh, 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 undertakes that extremely well. I think the current Lord Mayor will actually actively enable that in a positive way. 
Uh, but I will, uh, in the current circumstance, when we uh, are seeking an efficiency dividend, um, I, I am really troubled by uh, approving at ratepayers' expense uh, travel interstate uh, of this nature. I will give an undertaking that I will not take any travel uh, for the remainder of my term at ratepayers' expense. Um, I'm happy to do that, and I'll do that on, on, on principle. But in this case, it particularly rankles, Lord Mayor, it, because the, the double standard is, uh, to, to me, uh, with respect, abject. Uh, we have, uh, having just declared, Lord Mayor, having just declared a climate uh, emergency, having just declared a climate emergency, what's the first thing, what's the first thing we want to do? That's right. Get on a jet aeroplane, travel by jet, uh, interstate at great pay's expense to a climate conference, Lord Mayor, to a climate conference uh, emitting a metric tonne of carbon emissions. You know, what's wrong with uh, video conferencing, for heaven's sakes? This is why, Lord Mayor, this is why there is so much love uh, amongst ordinary working people for the political class. This is why. I mean, maybe not as much love as a bunch of Green Left councillors uh, in a conference Kara, Kara. discussing climate change, <laughs> Lord Mayor. Maybe not as much love as that. I have no doubt this meeting will go late and deep into the night, Lord Mayor, but I just do not see that it is warranted. I think it is an abject double standard. And uh, you know what? This is. To be, there's a serious point here. This is this is a this is a uh, this is a, a window into the future, Lord Mayor. It is, you know what? This is absolutely reminiscent of the past. History repeats itself, Lord Mayor. This reminds me of the Politburos, of the Dutchers, of the mistresses. It's all it just That's repeats okay, itself, Lord Mayor. And I'll finish with saying this, Orwell, George Orwell, if he was alive today, he'd be rolling at this stuff, he'd be rolling laughter, because he can see exactly the, 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 the name for the sequel to Animal Farm, Lord Mayor, well, it's Animal Farm 2, Climate Emergency. Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kerr. Thank you. Thank you for that entertainment. Um, I, I think we need to keep moving, because we're losing the plot here. Um, I, would anybody else like to speak to the motion? Deputy Lord Mayor. Just very, very briefly, Lord Mayor, I went through the guest speakers of this conference and I'm afraid, looking at it, it doesn't look like a policy conference so much, which I would be supportive of attending. Obviously, Council's had a number of briefs or, or so at least one substantial brief about the risk of climate change, particularly to our infrastructure but also to our population as well. Um, uh, and looking at the guest speakers, there doesn't seem to be anyone who will contribute meaningfully in that space. Of the 40 guest speakers, there is one scientist who holds a PhD and who is a climate scientist. There are zero engineers, um, so no one's giving advice on council infrastructure or government infrastructure and how best to maintain it. Um, what there are, though, are, are a lot of um, uh, organisational psychologists, there are a lot of advocates, there are a lot of adv adv uh, sorry, activists, um, and there are people there talking about social change and what have you. Now, it's not that, that tells me it's not a policy conference, it is a political conference, it is an activist conference, um, uh, and we like to send councillors to places to learn new things. I've, I would submit to the Chamber that <coughs> Councillor Sims needs no training or further tutelage when it comes to activism. He does that and he does that very well. Um, perhaps the Council might like to send someone like Councillor Kira and he, <laughs> he may learn something um, from, from such an expedition, uh, but I don't think there's going to be much value for the ratepayer when it comes to it. Um, it is a political conference. Um, I've been on political conferences before. They are funded, funded either by myself or by my political party. And I would suggest that Councillor Sims seeks to do the same in this instance. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Uh, I mean, uh, the new Deputy Lord Mayor goes off to what clearly was a junket on late night partying. Um, the Lord Mayor, um, and I have no objection to that, goes to America with two um, paid companies. Uh, with the, we have declared a climate change emergency in this council, um, and Rob Sims, as, as Councillor Abby had said, is the appropriate person to go, and he has amended it to say attend the national climate change emergency. Uh, we have got a political stance on this issue, and it's a good one. And to have the uh, little right wing ultra conservative twerps throw cold water over that is really annoying. Um, and to belittle other councillors in that way. I too, have in 25 years, have never been on a, um, a trip. But that doesn't mean to say that I'm churlish about it. Um, some people are well off on council, some people aren't. 
and um, that's why we pay for the cost of worthy attendance to some conferences. I think this is a mean faction-led vote um, and uh, I think Council Sims can't possibly be expected to walk to Melbourne. Um, so I think popping on a budget jet is quite, quite a thing. I think you're going to vote against it and I think that's a really low point in Council. And I'll be looking at who does. I know Sam will back it, but some of the other little hangers on us won't. <laughs> Councillor Moran. Um, members, um, I actually am uh, at Councillor Abbey. You did ask my opinion. I am very happy for Councillor um, Sims to attend this conference. It, it isn't as attending on my behalf. It is something that he expressed interest in. Um, and um, and ev even though I, I am very respectful of the, the uh, use of ratepayers' money, I do encourage our councillors as part of their training and development to actually uh, travel under their own steam and to bring back that information because if we aren't connected with what's happening around Australia and globally, then we actually aren't going to bring that back to our council chamber. So um, I, I do actually um, uh, support the amendment that you've put forward, Councillor Albion. Look, and just summing up, uh, members, um, I think this is appropriate, um, and every councillor will have the opportunity uh, to um, to attend events and be engaged in events. Um, I think probably specifically at this event, they might learn a lot more from Councillor Sims than the other way around, and maybe that is the case. But look, nevertheless, he is passionate about this issue. Um, and I respect his passion for it, uh, and I think we, we all should, although he may come from a different side of the politics on it, I still respect his view on it, and I think he is the appropriate person to be able to attend and contribute to that meeting, but given from a protocol perspective that council uh, wasn't invited uh, to ask for a representative, I think it's fair that he attends, um, and potentially maybe we can charter a Tesla to take him to Melbourne if there's a need to, uh, to minimise any carbon footprint, but look, I'd ask members to support this. Members, we're going to vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, that takes us to... Oh, sorry, that was the amendment. But one moment, Councillor. Um, we need to vote on that now becomes a substantive. Um, Councillor Abia, did you speak? Summed up. Those in favour? Those against? Um, members, we go to 12.5, progress of motions by elected members. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor. Oh, sorry, we'll just get Councillor Sims in. Apologies. Members, I go to 12.4, 12.5, uh, progress of motion by elected members, look for a mover. Councillor Martin, second of Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor, members? If not, back to the mover. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. That takes us to 12.6, which is the quarterly forward procurement report. I look for a mover. Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? No. Councillor Knoll. Members? No. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, 12.7, which is council solution winding up of section 43 regional subsidiary. Um, I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll. Members? Back to the mover. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to questions on notice. And I wonder if in um, uh, just basically looking at time whether members can take the questions and responses as read as they will appear in the minutes. Um, I'll go through the uh, Councillor Kerry, are you happy for 13.1? Councillor Martin, 13.2? Uh, hang on, let me see what it is. Uh, yes. Uh, Councillor Martin, 13.3? Yes. 
Uh, Councillor Martin, 13.4. Yes. Uh, Councillor Martin, 13.5. Um, yes. Thank you. Uh, members, are there any questions without notice? Yes. Yes, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, questions arising from the questions on notice. Um, there is no answer to the uh, second, uh, sorry, third and fourth parts of the question on notice, which asked of the administration, the square metres occupied by the built form of the proposed Adelaide Crows and Aquatic Facility, including open spaces that are designed to relate to or associated with built form, but not including roadways, footpaths, paved and car parking areas that are separate to the built form, and four, the square metres occupied by roadways, footpaths, paved car, parking areas that are separate to the built form of the proposed Adelaide Crows and Aquatic Facility. At CEO. Thanks, Tom. Through you, Lord Mayor. In simplest response, Councillor, you were presented for the first time tonight with the Adelaide um, Football Club's proposal, as were we. Um, so we weren't able to comment on the square metreage that they were talking about, but we now can populate both section three and four. And uh, could you um, provide that to the next meeting of council, or would you prefer to email it to all elected members? Um, I'm in your hands, council. I'll, I'll accept an email, so long as it's not confidential. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. And one more question, Lord Mayor. Um, I thank uh, the administration for the answers in relation to elected member travel and costs. Um, and the undertaking that a report on travel to New Zealand will be provided to Council in early 2020. However, there is no undertaking or information available in respect of 6.1 New York, 12-22 July. Will that be provided to elected members? I'll just find the... 13.3 uh... 6.1. Oh, and additionally, there is no detail about who attended. Uh, 6.1, which is New York, was training and development, which is funded by the Bloomberg Philanthropies, and I went on my own. Oh, okay, thank you for that. And um, there were no per diems or airfares no, provided by... No, everything you? was provided by the Bloomberg Philanthropies. Well, that's very In generous. Including my meals. And thank you. Thank you. Um, the, I will now go to motions on notice. Uh, first, uh, commencing with Councillor Kerra. Motion on notice, uh, LED screen luminous. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move as printed and seek a second. Thank you, Councillor Fabio. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, this is uh, about the um, uh, this is about us being enabled to deal with uh, what will increasingly be an issue, uh, given that the um, uh, efficiency of LED technology is uh, going ahead in leaps and bounds. Uh, so, um, it's it what what it seeks to do is to allow us uh, to be sure, to be certain uh, that we have um, exhausted every avenue to have a framework to deal with. Uh, LED screens. They're essentially television screens that are mounted outdoors uh, in public spaces. Um, it came up because uh, there are instances in the city where I observed, uh, for example, on Lee Street, where you have a very ambient uh, street setting, you have a very um, uh, average low light level, and you've got an incredibly intrusive uh, television screen uh, set vertically that is just a piece of advertising. It, it, it sort of wrecks the mood and, and, and the atmosphere in that particular spot. Um, it, is, it is just inappropriate. And it, uh, it could be easily regulated if we have the power to say uh, to, to the proprietors, look, um, why don't you just turn the contrast down, turn the contrast setting down on that screen. So I know that the uh, administration has provided a, a, a lengthy response, which is great. There is uh, effectively a quasi report already there. That's terrific. However, I would say to, to councillors, uh, just observe that there is a lot of recourse. There is a recourse to uh, traffic safety. Uh, there is a recourse to the uh, development plan, which is obviously going to be superseded. We're not talking about traffic. Uh, we don't, you know, we, we shouldn't need recourse to traffic safety. Uh, we shouldn't need recourse to um, 
uh, issues at the point of erection. This is about being able to have ongoing regulation, which I think we do need to be prepared to have. So this is simply saying, just give us a summary. I don't wish to have anything lengthy. It doesn't need to be a big colourful report. One page, two pages, that's fine. Let's just have a workshop. Let's just be sure that we've exhausted uh, the opportunities to to um, be the ones to be able to well to actually effectively regulate this because it is an issue and it's going to become more of an issue as these screens get cheaper and cheaper and more and more help. Thank you, Councillor Kerry, Councillor Bian, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm um, supportive of this, and I thank Councillor Kerry for putting it forward. Um, I think it is a discussion that we should have. Um, and it raises for me a, a bigger question about regulation of advertising in public space. I agree with uh, Councillor Kira, it is public space. Um, this can often be visual pollution. I think this opens up a conversation about whether we regulate advertising for things like gambling um, and so on um, through these uh, screens. I think that should be prevented. Um, and um, I certainly look forward to um, being able to look at how regulation can be used to prevent um, promotion of gambling um, and other um, social harms in the city. So I really thank um, Councillor Kira for putting this forward. Thank you, Councillor Sims. <coughs> um, members, if not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. I'm done. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. That takes us to 15.2, Councillor Kerr, a motion on Nidus Hunt Street Lighting. Yes, thanks, Lord Mayor. Move as printed and seek a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Lord Mayor, this is um, uh, upon discussion with the CEO, this is a very practically oriented uh, motion. Uh, it's, there is a dark spot. Uh, Halifax Street. <laughs> Um, Hutt Street, as, uh, and particularly the zone from Halifax to South Terrace, which is the most troubled section of Hutt, uh, Hutt Street, uh, there is a dark spot and is what is effectively the entryway uh, to that street. Uh, it is on the left-hand side as you're facing south, as you're heading down, um, and uh, it is partially uh, ameliorated by uh, the presence of some private lighting uh, that's there, but that private lighting is, is small, it's not very bright, and it's at the discretion of the owner of that business. When that private lighting is not on, it is a dark stretch. And the, the issue here is that you may have small business, a potential small business operators who will walk down there and say, I don't really want to set something up here because it's very dark. And it could make the difference between them saying, look, I will set something up because it's not that dark. Um, there is an existing uh, streetlight fixture uh, across the road on the other side of Hutt, uh, Halifax Street. Um, and the current streetlight that's there is, uh, is very tall and is obscured by the plane trees. So this just says, let's just explore options to augment. It doesn't dictate what that should be. I will assure the chamber that if we approve this, it will be done absolutely efficiently and pragmatically. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I support this. Uh, just a question for administration. Will progress on this motion be tied to a master planning process? CEO. <laughs> and could, could I get a, an undertaking for administration? Is that a rhetoric time? question or <laughs> no, would I'm you actually like an answer? No, I'd like to know. I think Clinton can answer that. No. <laughs> Thank you. I'm relieved to hear that. And can I just suggest maybe we get a timeline? Um, so I'm still waiting um, for action on my motion um, from the, about six or seven months ago on North Adelaide's lighting. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Just a quick question of the administration. Uh, that area is populated by a lot of um, trees and shade. Is that part of the issue? Has that been explored? Uh, through the chair, um, we will conduct a nighttime audit um, to undertake an assessment of the lighting uh, that may um, pertain to the trees, but at this point in time, we're not sure until we undertake the audit. And will that audit come back to council or it'll simply be actioned by the administration? Through Lord Mayor, it'll be just actioned. Members, 
If not, I'll go back to the mover and take some more. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Well, I'll just take hazards in uh, for a masterful piece of um, <coughs> baiting about the master plans. But I think that despite uh, the, the absence of a master plan, I think this is worth doing uh, for the reasons I've enunciated. Uh, it, it will hold itself up independently of, of a master plan. So I do commend the motion. Uh, thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, that takes us to uh, 15.4. Thank you, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, liquor licensing changes. Thank you. I move the motion on the terms it appears, and I seek a second. Uh, Councillor Avian, thank you. Um, thank you. Well, this um, motion, I'll, I'll keep this very brief. Um, the liquor licensing changing, uh, liquor licensing gambling changes that have come into effect recently um, uh, basically obliterated a number of conditions that were attached to um, uh, licensed venues and what they can and can't do. Those weren't necessarily related to operational aspects. However, I've been alerted to some examples where they have affected. Um, uh, basically, uh, the operation of the business and have been able to see the business expand what it can do. Um, for example, there is one nightclub that had a certain condition tagged uh, to uh, its uh, the times that it can sell alcohol. That was that it provides entertainment at the same time. Um, that has been lifted. So, whereas um, the business previously would not sell booze from 9 a.m. in the morning, they are now operating as a bar essentially from 9 a.m. Um, or close to it. These are changes and these were realities that were not contemplated when that venue put in for planning approval with us. Um, uh, and they certainly weren't contemplated um, uh, when there were challenges made against it um, in the courts. Now, um, uh, this is uh, a large issue for us potentially in the city. The commissioner has flagged that um, it is a tidy up effort to remove a lot of old, obsolete and frankly irrelevant conditions that exist to make the system a lot clearer. However, I think there are some things that, are, that, are, that have been thrown out in this process that will be abused. So the commissioner has retained the ability to reimpose those conditions for the next two years um, if he sees that they are necessary. What we don't have though at, at council and for us um, is a formal a process um, for providing a submission and an advocacy piece to the Commissioner to try and say that we need that in place. Where, whereas, of course, with court imposed orders, Council would often be represented um, at those sorts of proceedings and would factor into that process. We don't really have that um, with what we've got now. What we can do, however, is we can speak to the uh, Liquor and Gambling Commissioner and we can um, work with him to develop a checklist. Um, and that checklist, albeit uh, while it can't be relied on legally necessarily, we can work out exactly what elements we need to satisfy with him so that we can advocate to him and say, you really need to think about reimposing this particular condition on this particular venue because it's causing issues for the neighbours, for the businesses, the, for the residents that are alongside it. Um, uh, now, like I said, a lot of those conditions were quite benign. It could be that um, you need to put your bin out at a certain time, at a certain day, um, and at a certain part of the street, and those have carried on uh, with the license, you know, ad, ad infinitum for no reason. So there is a big tidy up effort there, um, but there is also this tension, as we know, between licensed venues and their neighbours and what can and can't be done. Um, uh, they're worried, um, particularly in the Highly Street precinct, that the baby has been thrown out with the bathwater, um, and we're going to see um, a return to disorderly conduct, basically, from some of these venues. So, this is um, uh, basically just to safeguard uh, council's role in it, and to allow us to advocate effectively on our ratepayers' behalf to the commission. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Avia, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I um, support this. I do just want to make the point, though, that some of the um, changes are not necessarily a bad um, thing. Um, I'm aware, for instance, uh, of liquor licensing um, requirements that were in place in the City of Adelaide that have stipulated, for instance, that some, some pubs can only play particular genres of music. I've heard of the scenario um, of like an Irish pub that could only play particular um, themed music and that to go outside of that was in breach of their license because the license was issued for a particular reason. So there are some um, aspects that are obsolete and need to be tidied up. Um, but I agree with Councillor Hyde, there's probably a broader discussion to have. I guess the only point I would make, I was at the um, Honey Street uh, meeting today. Councillor Hyde did raise this with the Commissioner and he said, look, I'm happy to have a conversation. I don't need to have a motion. 
Um, so I'm happy to support this, but maybe going forward, uh, Councillor Hyde could um, discuss it with the Commissioner directly with yourself, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Uh, just uh, expanding on that point, um, we did flag with Denny that it was coming beforehand. This is to reassure our ratepayers on the public record that we're advocating for them um, on their behalf. So with that, I commend the motion to. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to 15.5, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move my motion as printed and I look for a second. Councillor Abiyad has seconded. Thank you, members. I believe this motion is quite a straightforward one and I will keep it brief. The intention of this motion is not to interfere the CEO about how he should employ his staff, but ask him to just open a small door or window for our graduate students as they have a better chance to gain a reasonable good job after graduation. Besides, I will also inform, I will also like to inform them what kind of skills they need to gain before they graduate. <clears throat> we might also need to help them to consider, we, we, we might also need to consider how to help these young people to learn these skills before graduation. Members, I have heard a joke before. And the joke is lovable, but it's also quite true. The biggest export for South Australia is not wine, and it's also not international education. The biggest export for South Australia is young people. We are sending our young people to interstate or other countries. We all know that we need young people to stay in Adelaide, to stay in South Australia, to breed and grow their family here. But somehow, a lot of them are unable to find a career here. On one hand, we always try to encourage private sectors to employ more young people. We always try to encourage other authorities to help students to gain work skills before graduation. But I think we should do it ourselves first. I leave it to our administration and wait for a report. I encourage members to support our young people and support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Albion. I just want to note very briefly, Lord Mayor, that my position from a consistency perspective, it's important that um, matters to do with the operation and staffing of the organisations are um, exclusive to the CEO. I'm happy to um, look at this and get some information from the CEO for us to better understand what um, that position is, but I just wanted to put that on record. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just uh, to clarify with this motion, Lord Mayor, noting that we're requesting administration provide a report confirming the current approach to a graduate internship program. And in the administration comment, we've essentially been told that there is no graduate internship program. Could I suggest a variation to the move in the seconder that might um, better clarify um, uh, what we're being delivered in this report? Um, uh, perhaps the variation would be request administration provide a report to council um, investigating and delete confirming the current. And investigating an approach to a graduateship internship program. Or even investigating a, investigating a graduate internship program. Mover and seconder to accept that variation. The mover has said yes. The graduate intern program instead of the current approach. No, 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 sorry. I'll happy to explain why if you want to move an amendment. It's all second. No. Okay, I move it as an amendment. Councillor Sim seconds. Um, I, I think it's pretty clear, Lord Mayor, and my explanation was quite you know, straightforward. Um, we currently do not have an approach in place to a graduate internship program. Um, so really, Councillor Ho's, what he wanted to achieve with this motion was already outlined in the administration comment. It was confirmation that nothing exists. If we actually want to see something come out of this, 
then we need a report that details what we might need to do in order to achieve a graduate internship program for the city of Adelaide. Um, that's what this amended motion will seek to do. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm very fascinated to hear Councillor Abriel's views on that. Uh, Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I, I support um, this amendment um, and I, I support uh, Councillor Ho's intention here. I do agree with him we need to do what we can to try and address the um, drain, uh, the brain drain. We do lose a lot of young people to um, other states and other cities and uh, the City of Adelaide is a significant employer um, it makes sense that we do what we can to influence uh, this space um, and I think the idea of having a graduate internment, uh, internship program rather <laughs> 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 the, the, um, the idea of a graduate internship program um, is something that uh, would be very um, exciting to um, potential graduates, although I will caution Lord Mayor that as part of their induction they not be asked to sit through a council meeting. We don't want to turn them off or accelerate the, um, the brain drain. Thank you, um, Councillor But um, no, this is a good uh, worthwhile project. Thank you. Uh, members? Just in briefly speaking against this, this is exactly what I was warning against. Um, I don't want the council to investigate or ask the CEO to investigate a graduate internship program within the city of Adelaide. We employ only one member of this organisation and that is the CEO and it is his job to take our strategic plan, which includes maybe creating jobs and for him to deliver on that. We are starting to meddle in operational matters telling the CEO who to employ and who not to employ, and that is not our job. And I would argue that would contravene the Local Government Act and the intent of the Local Government Act. It says very clearly we cannot direct the CEO individually. As a chamber, we can, but when it comes to the operation of the organisation, we can't do that. Next thing we're going to start seeing is um, same-sex marriage, um, LGBTIQ community people, we need to have the same numbers. Uh, women, females, need to have the same numbers. Next thing you know, we are, we are starting to meddle into organisational structure. We've seen a very worthy motion from Councillor Martin a few weeks ago with regards to um, Aboriginal employment within the City of Adelaide. These are all things that we need to talk about at a strategic level, which says about equity, which talks about equality, which talks about creating jobs. These are the things we need to address at a strategic planning level that matters for the CEO to perform. Now, if the CEO does not perform, then there's a CEO performance panel that gets to manage that process and tell council about his performance if he hasn't brought into the chamber what we've put in the strategic plan. This is not appropriate. And I'd ask council members to please do not support this because this opens the floodgates for interference within the operations of the organisation, what is a matter completely exclusive to the CEO when it comes to staffing. Um, thank you, Councillor Abbott. I might ask the CEO to make a comment on that because um, I do agree that we're crossing the line into OBS, but I also think that it would be good that we could actually be leading the way in terms of graduate intern programs, given that we've got five universities, numerous RTOs and um, TAFEs. So, um, but please, I would like your comment. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Look, this is no doubt a positive idea. and There's no disputing that at all. Um, I don't require your approval to initiate a program like this. And my view was that the motion that was originally put in place or the recommendation was really seeking um, my response to what we're doing. The response is we're not doing enough. And so I would pick this up and, and I have an ambition to actually do some work in this space. So I considered it in this original form to be quite enabling and it would be an opportunity for me to explain to you what I'm doing, not take it as an instruction. And I think that's the key difference. Um, I'd like to provide advice to you at all times on what we're doing within the organisation. I certainly don't need an instruction to do that. And um, the, uh, Councillor Abbey had quite clearly explained the Local Government Act is specifically set up in that way. So, um, yeah, I think I've made myself clear. Thanks. Um, so
So, Mem sorry, Councillor Cameron. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Yeah, look, we're building on that. I think um, I think these are opportunities for us to work constructively with the CEO. Uh, I think obviously the CEO is amenable uh, to uh, opportunities of this nature, but let's not cross this line. I think Councillor Abiat has raised uh, a concern that is absolutely uh, legitimate and absolutely important. This demarcation is it's very important that we observe that uh, because we will be opening a can of worms if we don't uh, if we proceed down that path and doing it this way will set a precedent where we will uh, end up with a can opener and some worms and a, a tin. Thank you for the can opener. Um, Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, I, I support uh, Councillor Ho's proposal and I disagree uh, profoundly with the previous speakers in respect of um, Council providing advice with regard to important strategic matters such as employment. Um, any board would consider matters like this to be part of their brief, just as they consider things like uh, gender balance as part of their role in ensuring that an organisation. Well, I, the Lord Mayor shakes her head, but I, uh, I have been part of organisations which have taken very active roles in ensuring that they represent um, the community from which they recruit. And that includes organisations like... Uh, uh, I beg your pardon? We're not a board. We are a board. We are actually a board. We are providing... No, we are a board. Point, point of order, Councillor Martin. We're not a board. Uh, may, I, may I finish, Lord Mayor, please? Please. We are a board in the sense that we replicate the same tasks that are required of a board, and that is to provide strategic direction for the organisation. That's a, that's our function. That's what we're here for. And in the same way that the boards that I've worked with have made decisions about the nature of the organisation that they wish to be a member of the board of, it is the same here. And this organisation has also made decisions about its attitude to matters. Land tax is an example. Uh, the Lord, Deputy, former Deputy Lord Mayor has made a point of carrying on uh, uh, somewhat vigorously about how this council opposes the decision of state government and has a policy position on a tax in which it has no role other than to observe how it impacts businesses. Similarly, this organisation does have a role in saying how it will um, uh, structure its employment policies to reflect to reflect the society in which we uh, we live, the community in which we live. It is a perfectly reasonable proposition. Um, it is quite wrong to be suggesting that we are somehow meddling in the organisation. If we were saying to the CEO, we expect you to take on 150 interns in the next 12 months, then I'm, I might understand the argument that's being put, and I, I, I have heard that before. But this is simply asking for a report to reflect what might be the intentions of the elected body for the organisation. So, uh, with the response to that, um, sorry, I do, I do actually, as a point of order, we are not a board. We, we are elected members and we're not a board. It's a very different governance structure. Um, and I can, did you wish to comment on that? Sorry, Lord Mayor, you're absolutely correct. Um, we are not a tra traditional board. The Local Government Act is specifically set out to um, require a separation between council members and employment of staff. Um, it is true that you employ one staff member, which is myself, and you delegate authority to me to um, manage the rest of the organisation. Um, I can offline provide you some clarity on that, just so you've got some understanding. And I'm happy to do that um, following time speed. Lord Mayor, may, may I offer a personal explanation? I am not suggesting we are a board. I am saying that there are characteristics. And you corrected me, you said we are not a board, as I was proposing. I'm not proposing that. I'm saying to you that some of the functions of this elected body are like a board. We meet once a month. Well, we meet once a month, yeah. <laughs> and whenever, whenever we meet outside of that, we don't vote. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Martin. Um, <laughs>
I could make a suggestion, members, that we uh, we could withdraw the motion and we could let the uh, CEO take it as an undertaking that we will explore for the organisation a graduate intern program. Oh, Councillor Ho. Actually, Lord Mayor, I would like to withdraw my own motion. Uh, well, because like the, mo the intention of the motion is more like a suggestion or like a friend friendly reminder to the CEO to open up a small window for those young people. And I did not expect the discussion would go down to this path, so I would rather withdraw my motion. Thank you. Thank you. And my apologies, Councillor Ho, we're discussing the amendment, so I can't actually get you to withdraw the motion until we I'll finish. withdraw my amendment. Thank you. Uh, We've withdrawn the amendment, Councillor. Councillor Ho, are you still happy to withdraw your motion? Um, uh, members, uh, CEO, could, could, are you happy to have an undertaking that you will yep. have a little look in terms of graduates? Happy to do. Great. Thank you. Members, thank you. That takes us to 15.6, which is Councillor Martin, motion on notice, transcript of Legislative Council of South Australia. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look. I am waiting for a response from the Australia Arab Chamber of Commerce, and until I have that, I will be withdrawing this and I will resubmit it for the new year. Okay. Um, that takes us to motions without notice, members. Motions without notice. If not, uh, we will now need to move 17.1, which is exclusions to the public. Councillors, there are three items presented with a request for consideration and confidence. Each item will require a motion and a decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration and confidence. Could I have a mover for 18.1.1, which is the recommendation of uh, uh, Murder Street funding? Thank you, Councillor Kerra, and the second, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members, not back to the mover. Councillor Kerra, are you summed up? Yes. If I can go to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, I have recommendation 18.1.2, uh, which is the lease Adelaide Visitor Centre. Look for a mover. Deputy Lord Mayor, second to Councillor Abraham today. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Those to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And 18.2.1, which is Citizen of the Year Awards. I look for a mover. Councillor Canal, seconder, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, if not, back to the mover. Uh, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank, thank, you to, thank you to our media members for staying so late this evening.
Declare the meeting closed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.